Mustn't forget this. You all right? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. I'll see you later then. I hope so. Can you be at the cafe? In about seven hours. <laughs> Don't think I could manage that. Some of us have no choice. No rest for the wicked. You think that's what we are? No. Suppose I should though, shouldn't I? No. See you later then. Good night. Ah, sleep okay? I had no choice, had I? Oh, you're up then. I didn't know what time you'd want rousing. I don't. Whatever time I want to wake up, I just have to think of it before I go to sleep. <coughs> it always works. Oh, that's handy. Is that true? Yeah, I'll prove it to you sometime. Oh. Yes, well, uh, help yourselves to cereal. There'll be some toast in a minute. What do you mean you had no choice? Well, she was on guard, weren't she? She was making sure I stopped up there and you stopped down here. No. She flipping weather at one point. I thought she was going to kick down outside my door. No, she just couldn't sleep or something. She couldn't, no. She was too busy marching up and down on our landing. Here we are, then. Now, you'll uh, both be in for your teas, will you? Yeah. Only I thought I might get a bit of fish for a change. You like fish, do you, Sally? Yeah, it's all right. Yes, well, it's easily digested, isn't it? It doesn't lie on your stomach. Only, uh, I thought I heard you moving about a bit last night. Could you not settle? Yeah. Except I thought I heard somebody moving about and all. Perhaps you've got mice. No, I don't think so. Can I ask what you were coming downstairs for? On the one occasion when I did have cause to look out. I was going to the kitchen for a glass of water. Oh. Well, in future, perhaps you'll bear in mind that there's a glass kept in the bathroom. Now, let's see. Yes, we could do some more hot water in here. She'll be locking us in next. I thought I'd get in early while he was still nice and quiet. Ah, you do right. <clears throat> hey up, Percy. You don't mind if I push in, do you, Emily? And I only wanted a packet of fags. No, oh, that's all right. You're not yeah. taking to driving to work yet, then? I haven't, no. Ah, 1.30, please, love. Oh, hang on, there's something else I wanted while I'm here. I've just rung a cigarette, so... Don't worry about it, Count. I'm not in any hurry. Not that she knows that, mind No, you. well... I wonder what she's going to do with that car, then. You know, it doesn't seem to have travelled far since it arrived. Every time I opened my curtain, it stood there crying out for somebody to get used in it. I wouldn't be surprised if they sell it, you know, buy something cheaper. Well, that road would finish finishing pocket, wouldn't they? I mean, they're getting neither profit nor pleasure out of it just now. Yeah, I'll about take that. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Right, 2 99 altogether, love. That's all right. Mm -hmm. We're just saying, uh, have you got any plans yet for that little car of yours? Plans? Yeah, well, you know, it must be worth about £3,500 condition it's in. If you're going to sell it, the sooner the better. Oh, I? And who says I'm selling it? it well, nobody. No, so we're just saying if you were thinking of selling it. Look, I'm thinking about driving it, not selling it. Oh, you're a qualified driver. I didn't realise. I'm not, but I will be before long, so you can realise all your life. And happen when I am, I won't just be driving to work in it. I'll be driving to other shops in it and all. 
dear. Some folks, you just can't be pleasant with them. Oh, no. No, them two's in rooms of their own. Sally's got Kevin's bed, and he's in a put you up in the front room. And that's where they're going to stop. So there's not been no, uh, what's the polite word for it? Cohabitation. None of that? No, and there isn't going to be, neither. What do they have to say about it? Well, they can say what they like. Mind you, Kevin's a good lad. He knows what my standards are, and left to himself, he'll abide by them. Well, left to himself, he won't have no choice. And what about Sally? <laughs> well, she's not a bad lass. She's just never been shown no better, that's all. I think you're fighting a losing battle, Hilda. Yeah, maybe I am. But there's enough encouragement to do wrong these days. They just need somebody to point them in the right direction. Oh, give over, Hilda. It's never been no different. Oh, it was different enough in my day. Well, were it, though? I mean, honest, no. Folk have been locking up their daughters for years. They've always found ways of getting out. Well, we had our standards. And even if we didn't keep to them, well, at least we had someone to stop us going completely daft. Well, maybe they've got standards of their own, though, Hilda. I mean, that aren't yours. Oh, granted. And when they've got homes of their own, they can live by them. Fair enough. Yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah, well, all this freedom, all this carrying on, doesn't seem to have made folk any happier, does it? Do you want a cup of tea, love? Me and Martin's just having one. Er, uh, no thanks, Phyllis. Oh, right here. She's in a world of her own this morning, that one. The boss is privileged, though, isn't he? <laughs> hey, guess whose birthday it is today, then? It's not yours, is it? It is, yeah. 18. Hey, happy birthday, love. Thanks Aww. very much, yeah. 18 now, so now I can... I can drink, I can vote, I can go and watch monkey films. <laughs> oh, well, not that I've done anything like that yet, Phyllis, because I've not really had the time, you know. Well, why didn't you let us know? I'd have sent you a card. Well, you still can. It's my birthday all day, innit? Yeah, I'll get it on. Hey, did you know it's Martin's 18th birthday today? Uh, no. Hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take him out for a drink tonight when we've done. Well, I'd like to, Phyllis, but uh, it might be a bit awkward. Go on. Well, I have to pick Nicky up, you see. Is that for me? No, it's my auntie. Wish you happy birthday. <laughs> hey, I've told her. Never mind the card. I'll tell you what, I'll take you for a drink when we've done with you tonight. Hey, my mum's warned me against swimming, will not you? Just as long as you don't take too much notice. <laughs> anyway, what about it, love? A maybe. Oh, hi, hi. Is this your breakfast you're having, then? Oh, sort of, yeah. He was flat out when I left him this morning. Oh, um, why not? Can I have two lagers? Certainly. So what time was it you got in last night, then? Or was it more like this morning? It uh, got a bit later than I realised. <laughs> got yourself fixed up with a lady friend now, have you? I'm right, uh -huh. But why shouldn't he? His foot loose and fancy free. Anybody we know. That'd be telling, wouldn't it? Yeah, leave him alone, Veer. He's entitled to his secrets. <laughs> Listen, love, you enjoy yourself while you can. How else? Uh, just the right change, that's all. You'll get it. On the way, then. I'll see you later. OK, hey, hello. See you later, then, uh, whoever she is. Uh, I haven't said there is anyone, ever. You don't have to. It's written all over your face. <laughs> hey, that'd be nice if he has got somebody, won't he? Uh, providing that it don't get serious and then he has to go back. Well, he's a good-looking fella. He can take me out any time. <laughs> well, I won't stand in your way, my sweet. If he wants to drag you off to Aussie land, then you can go. Hey, you'd look very well on the surfboard. You look very much like a surfboard. You'd like that, wouldn't you? So long as I left my car behind me. That's it, isn't it? Would be appreciated. Well, I've got news for you. Because I'm taking proper lessons from a proper instructor. Come on, Ivy, let's sit down. Since when? Since tonight. More money than sense. Who? That wife of mine. She's only after paying for flipping driving lessons. Well, why can't you teach her? Well, because it doesn't work out that simple somehow. It's always like that. Are you all right, Anthony? Yeah, I'm all right. It's just the lady I've been looking for. Me? Definitely. Why? Hey, is it you that's been putting your mother up to this flipping driving lesson line? Listen, I don't know what you're on about. Well, she's after paying for one of these flipping instructors. Jack will serve No, 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 Gloria, I'll have a pint, please. Look, it's a waste of money, isn't it? It's better with two of us driving. <sighs> Listen, Dad, it's got nothing to do with me. Talk to me, Mum, do what you want, but just leave me out of it, all right? You know something? You look gorgeous. Thank you, kind sir. So what are you doing tonight? Working. I mean, after you've finished. Going home. Say no more. I'll pick you up after closing time. No, Terry. Well, we can do a couple of hours in a nightclub or something. No, and that's 65, please. Well, think about it. I don't have to. I've said no, and I mean it. Hello. Hello, will the person wants to be? And I have a Cornish pasty, love. Have you got any of them custard slices you had last week? Um, Here you go. Here you go. 
I was hoping it was you. Yeah, all right. You get back to Ivy's all right. When can I see you again? No. Brian's not due back till tonight, so uh, how about now? See you at our place in about 15 minutes. Bye. Sorry, we haven't got any custards, but we've got some apple or blackberry pies, if them will do. Okay, give us a slice of apple then. Hey, as yeah. I told you, what? it's his birthday today. Oh, great. How old? 18. 18. 18. Have you been kissed? Hey. <laughs> Congratulations. Nancy, Have a lovely really birthday, love. Thank, Thank you. Much. I've got to go out for a bit. You can manage, can't you? Well, I, but... Hey, there's... there's no wrong, is there not? No. No. <laughs> Talk for a bit. Yeah, sure. I've, um, I've never done anything like this before, you know. I haven't. No. No. I don't know why I'm doing it now. Not that I'm regretting it. I just don't know why, that's all. Well, we both of us know what we're doing, don't we? And what's that? I mean, we're not stupid. I know you're married and that you've got a kid. So do I. Well... Look, if anybody had told me I'd be doing this, I'd have laughed. I would. I'm not blaming you. I'm not even blaming myself. That's what's so amazing. I mean, you hear about other women and you think, how can they? How can they when they've got families? Well, now I know, don't I? And the answer is, it's easy. Your family doesn't seem to matter because it doesn't feel like it's got anything to do with them. You're not doing anybody any harm. I'm worrying you, going on like this. No. Sorry. No. I mean, what's wrong with me that I don't feel guilty? Nothing. Do you take sugar? Nothing. <laughs> See? I don't even know that about you, do I? And you, I don't know much about myself, do I? I can't, can I? This isn't me. Not the me like I thought I were. You don't regret it. Me? No. No. Neither do I. She's been gone over an hour. No, you don't know where. Well, she got this phone call, and next minute you couldn't see her for dust. Oh, happen it with Brian, then. What's that? That's uh, that phone call for Gail? Yeah. No, it wasn't Brian. It was, uh, it was that Australian fella. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, look, all I wanted to... Would you tell her that I might pop round tonight? Only half's out counselling, so I'll be stuck on me tabs. Yeah. Oh, well, tell her, all love. Right. Tell her. Hey, yeah, see you did you know it's his birthday today? He's 18. Oh, congratulations. Come here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's mm. instead of a card. <gasps> nice one. Where's my present? <sighs> you don't have to tell everyone about this, do you? You're loving it. Must be fate, eh? And you know what they say, you can't fight fate. Oh, can't I? No. So, uh, what time am I going to pick you up tonight? Oh, it's getting beyond a joke, is this, Terry? Who's joking? Look, do you remember last time when you talked me into going to that party with you of Kevin Webster's? How could I forget it? Yeah. Well, what I'll never forget is those dirty little lies you told your mates afterwards. Hey? You know what I mean, Terry, about you and me. Trying to impress them at my expense will have no intentions of letting that happen Listen, twice. that was a... Look, they, they, they just got the wrong end of the stick, that's all. No, Terry. Now, be told, will you? Oh, could I just take one of those, please? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Uh, 43 pence, please. Listen, uh, I'm going back to the flat. Can I give you a lift? Oh, that'd be great, thanks. Right. I'm going back that way and all. 
Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you. I thought you were... No, no, I'd like a lift, thanks, Alan. Just give us a chance to explain, will you? This arm would be longer than the other, you know, if I had to carry this lot. Great. Oi, oh, just a minute. Do you not want this lot, then? Is everything all right? It is now, yeah, thanks. Here we are. Thank you. Now, you just adjust the seat so you're comfortable with it. Right. All right. Right, love. Yeah, I bet you've got to be cool to be kind in your job, haven't you? Sorry? Telling them straight when you can see they're never going to make a driver. Oh, most folk manage it sooner or later. Well, I'm telling you something. There's no good worrying about her feelings, because you ain't got none. Hey, Mavis, Mavis, stay back, love. Why, what's the matter? No, no, keep up the road. Keep up that seat. Keep up the road. Me. I can't understand what you're panicking about. Oh, well, that was him doing that with them, their dual controls. Hello, Phyllis Love. Hello, Bet Love. Now, what you having? Uh, Bite to bitter, please. Pint to bitter, and I'll have a glass of port. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you know it's his birthday today? He's 18. Oh, happy birthday, Love. Thanks very much. Cheers. 18, yeah. eh? Yeah. So, what were you doing drinking in here last week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to lose me my license? No. I'm very glad to hear that. See, I told you to stop keep telling folk, didn't I? Yeah. I didn't know you'd been sneaking round pubs. <laughs> Why didn't you take me with you? Bad news, my love. What do you mean? Put it a lesson. What did he say? Oh, he said I'm a natural, I should have no problems. Oh, reckon I thought you might be lucky and got an honest one. Look, you're not putting me off, Jack Duckworth. So stop trying, get us half a larder. What else did he say? He has to take a lesson for every year of your life. That car will be rusted through by the time you've managed that. Well, it can rust up before I let you get your hands on it. Right, 37. Cheers, Hope you get breathalyzed. <laughs> Have we heard from Brian at all? I thought he was supposed to be back by now. Yeah, he rang about tea time. Would I mind if he stopped over another night and came back late tomorrow? Oh! oh. Well, you don't, do you? No, of course I don't. Cheers. Cheers, lovey. It's just pathetic to hear him go on about all the cars he's got to see. Why, why didn't he just say Francis another night out? Oh, that would be too easy, wouldn't it? I mean, I think they enjoy it more when they think they've put one over on you. Still. Make sure he makes it up to you when he gets back. I will. Do you know you've got a lot on running that cafe? You don't want to overdo it. Take me as your example. I can manage. Where were you this dinner time, hmm? Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Mmm. When? Well, I called into the cafe. There were Martin and Phyllis there looking all flustered. <laughs> They're a right pair, them two, aren't they? Yeah, I just had to nip out to the wholesalers. Oh, only Martin said it was because she had a phone call from Ian or something. Oh, yeah. That was something else. Oh. That weren't why I went out. The... I wasn't thinking that. No, I <laughs> just wondered where you were, that's all. <laughs> Hello, you Hello, Ivy. Come in. Oh. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Audrey. Great man's think alike, eh? Mmm. Looks down. like it. Well, I just fancied a walk, love, so I thought I'd call round and see how you were going on. Well, Nicky's in bed and Brian's still in Edinburgh. Oh, I thought you would jump in today. He was, till he found out he liked it. Oh. I'll get you a glass. My man brought the wine. Hey, no, love, I'll make myself a cup of tea in just a minute. Oh, all right. There's sometimes you fancy a cup of tea and nothing else will do, don't you? No, oh, very occasionally. <laughs> well, it's a good job I didn't bring you around, isn't it? I tried to persuade him by telling him that Brian were here, but, um, well, he didn't seem very keen. Yeah, still he wouldn't have enjoyed it with just us, would he? Mind you, I think he's after seeing this lady friend of his again. No, who's this thing? Come on. Oh, we haven't been told her name. It's just that uh, he were in late last night and he started acting a bit sheepish oh. when Vera asked him what he'd been up to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a nice young man, you know, isn't he? I mean, I, I don't generally go on Australia, as you've noticed, love, but, um, well, he's been no trouble. Do you know, in fact, I'll be sorry when he goes. Um. When's that then, Ivy? Oh, in another week or two. Although you don't know. Happen it'd be a bit longer if he's found somebody he's taken his shine to. Happen he not go back at all. Well, 
Hello, Luke. Vodka and tonic. Thank you. Vodka and tonic, please, and uh, whiskey and soda. Right. I don't think I can manage a pint after that meal. <laughs> Been dining out, have you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, yes. I was just thinking it must be more eating out than these days. Well, it's ever been that way. Well, you're getting better, Luke. Yeah, thanks. 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 Time was he only ate out when he went on your holidays, but these days there must be some folk never eating. That's one centile of beef. Thank you. Oh, you beautiful. What you want? Excuse me, yeah. I want a pint. And then I want to take you on. What do I have to do? I don't have to do, Al. Will you get it into your thick head? I'm not going home with you. I'm not going anywhere with you. Listen, Gloria, I just want us to have a little talk, all right? No. I have to ask it was a fellow at work that told me. Well, why not? Hey, give me one good reason why. Hey, what's going on? Oh, no, not you again. It's all right, Alan. She don't need you to look after her, you know. Keep your voice down, will you? What's all this about? He's it's got Terry. one woman already. I mean, how many women do you want, eh? Well, I've less of that kind of talk and all. Jack? Oh, yeah. And what are you going to do about it, eh? I mean, come on, you're going to stop me, are you? You'll know about it if I do. Get rid of your Terry. Oh, blimey. Come on, then, pal. Impress your lady friends. Hey. Come, come on, old man, what's come, stopping you? Come on, he's enough hey, of that now. Terry, come home. On. <laughs> come on, son. See you stopping with your girlfriends, pal. Come on. It's a very sensible decision, that. Come on. Because you'll be safer with them. <laughs> come on. I'm sorry, Ben. Come on. What started all that? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. It's not a bribe, honest. It's only a fiver. Luke, I've said I would take it if I could. Goodness knows I could do with a bit extra. You both eat like horses. Well, there you are, then. No. Now, I've been a landlady for many years, and I know me onions. You're after getting on a legal footing, aren't you? You know you'd be my lodger official like the minute I accepted that. Mrs Ogden, I don't want a rent book. I just want to help you out with the housekeeping. Yes, maybe you do. But the minute money changes hands, that's what's called a verbal agreement. And once you've got one of them, <laughs> that can bind you in a court of law. I know some folk can't get rid of squatters, let alone rent-paying undesirables. Don't call me a rent-paying undesirable. You're not an undesirable, are you, Sally? No. no, the only way you can help me with my housekeeping yeah. is to get cracking and find yourself somewhere else to live. Now, as you don't seem to be making much progress under your own steam, I've ringed those in last night's gazette. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mrs Ogden, very thoughtful. Oh, and don't think you can bottom me up with flattery, neither. I do have a bit of sympathy for you, but I'm not going to aid and abet you in your model decline. Of course, it's Terry's upbringing, you know, Gloria. Oh, flipping heck. I mean, what can you expect, the starting life he's had? Jack and Vera. I suppose we should be thankful, really, he's just an idiot. He could easily have been a homicidal maniac. Well, there was no harm done. No, thanks to Alan Bradley being the model of self-control. I'd have belted him one, I would. Well, what was it all about? Because I couldn't get any sense from our telly. Can anybody? He was pestering Gloria for her favours, in the usual persistent male Duckworth manner, all the charm of a big pig, when Alan Bradley gallantly stepped in and warned him off. Did it hang about a bit? Perhaps I can use a little bit of male insight here to cast a bit of light on the psychological background. Psychology? We're talking about lust and thuggery. Yes, but the thing is, Glow, is Alan being gallant? I mean, is he? A disinterested flow. Yes, he is. Even though he does live adjacent, as we all know. Oh, look, he was with Rita, wasn't he? I know, but from our Terry's wounded point of view, by sticking his disinterested nose in, he does make himself a rival. Do you think they could be out in this, Glow? In what? Well, do you think Alan does fancy you and Terry knows about it? He doesn't fancy me, I'm sure he doesn't. It was just friendliness. Mm. Mm. What do you mean, mm? Mm, what? Well, love, It'd be a funny sort of unattached chap as would content himself with a friendship with you. Would indeed. Hello. Hello, lovely. Oh, dear. Oi, 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 just a minute. Where are you going with that bottle of shampoo? Well, where do you think I'm going? Back to Mrs. Clark with ringing wet hair. Well, you can't do that. You can't just walk out with stuff. It's got to be rung up. I mean, my books are going to be in a right tangle if I let folk just walk in and out with stuff, aren't I? Folk, I'm your wife. Yeah, that doesn't matter, though. It's beside the point. I mean, this is business. It's got to go through the hairdressing turnover into the shop turnover. Well, you'll have to put it in for me. I've got no money on oh, there. Uh, well, you'll have to give me it later. Oh, all right. All right. It's a very peculiar way of going on, if you ask me. Still, there's a lot of it about. Oh, not Gail again. Oh, I'm worried sick of. Do you know, I don't know what Mrs. Hildred's going to say about her hair. I've made a right mess of it at the back this morning. 
I'm just so worried about Gail. I'm sure there's something going on between her and Ian. That lass is far too sensible. <sighs> Nobody's too sensible for that. It's a trait we all have. It's a trait that's ruined a considerable part of my life, I can tell you. Do you know, Ian has even phoned her uh, at work. I tins mean, have ears, love. You can dismiss it all if you like, Alf, but as soon as I've got a spare second, I'm going round there to tackle her about it. Thanks oh. for the shampoo. More bother. What's the matter with Alf? No, nothing. You won't think so, though, to hear where she's going on about stuff. Oh, hello, Alan. Hello, Mavis. Uh, you're stuck. Well, I can't decide between bacon and smoked mackerel. Oh, well, I can't help you then. I can't stand either of them. I'm just going to have a nice fruit yoghurt. Oh, by the way, Rita and me were just singing your praises. Oh. What have I done now? Well, it's not what you've done, it's what you didn't do. You know, that over Terry Duckworth last night. That was just a young lad getting overexcited, that's all. Yeah, but a lot of men would have punched him in the nose, the things he was saying. Arita's Len, for one, who used to get that look in his eye and he'd go haywire. Whereas you just rose above the situation. Flipping it, maybe. What did you say to him? What do you mean? Well, he's gone off, he's, he's left a, a full basket of grub and he's not bought out. How strange. Oh, I don't know you women. Have no peace with you. you best manager out, though, Gail. Best one I've worked for, anyhow. How many have you worked for, though? Oh, shut up, Phyllis. One. But, well, you're great, Gail. Oh, don't go. I'm sorry, Martin. I was miles away. Yeah, went to the side of Globe, weren't you? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, you see. If you go, was it? What are me and Phyllis going to do, eh? Hey, if you do go, though, look up Chalky and Craig. I'd love that. Phyllis, I'm trying to talk it out of this. You're only trying to save your own job. <laughs> only? What do you mean, only? Listen, I was on the door for months before this job. And every inch of our wallpaper, this calf and Gail and you, is very important to me. And I'm not going to see it fizzling out without saying me little piece, am I? <laughs> nice climate, though. Hey? See, I'm just reading yesterday's temperatures. Beach weather out there. Huh? She's got it in one, you see there, Gail. <laughs> It's very bad for a fair skin like yours, all that sun. <laughs> and they've got dirty big hammerhead sharks over there. <laughs> How would you feel if your Nicky got attacked by an hammerhead shark, eh? It's got to be thought about, Gail. Hey, and they'll call you Bruce. They will. <laughs> Could you stand that, eh, being called Bruce? I'll tell you what, Martin. If I go, I recommend you as the new manager. Oh, really? See, you'll be bringing your brochures next. Aye, and we'll be offering to, to run it at Fairport. <laughs> and to show you what faith I have in you. I'll leave you in charge now. No? Well, it's just start at lunchtime, Rush Gail. You don't mind, Phyllis, do you take an order off Martin? Not so long as I can give them straight back if I don't like them. Oh, thank you. See you in a couple of hours. What, Gail? Gail? Where's she gone? The rest from you, I dare say. Oh, thanks, mate. What? Mrs. First, look, I've just received a damning blow in your shop. Tea, please. Maybe taking up boxing, has she? Upon my request for a simple laundry marker, a common enough item, I was informed by Miss Riley that she had got one, but she didn't know its precise whereabouts. I stood in the shop for approximately eight minutes and decided to leave and take my customer elsewhere. Now, what are you going to do about that? Let me pay for your tea. Oh, how oh, civil. Yeah. Wait a minute. What are them floaters? Hey. Oh, Phyllis. Evidence of substandard tea and inefficient straining. Hey, let me push you, mate. Hey, hey, you you hey, hey, get another cup of tea at once. Come on, Phyllis. I don't know what this country's coming to. I really don't. And I don't know what this cafe's coming to. Gail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to. Dangerous, love. I know, but... And Brian, Brian's your back there, isn't it? Tonight, yeah. I just wanted to see you again. Should be easy off, you know. I know. How? How, indeed. Gotta try, Gail. I mean, gotta be practical about this. Practical? Who wants to be practical to you? You gotta be joking, but... Oh, what the hell? Come around later, eh? Oh, no, not here. I couldn't. Oh, yeah, OK. You come round to our place, eh? Oh, pretty heavy, you know, Gail, in a black zone. Tonight yeah. he's due back, and he'll stay away longer than shorter if I know Brian. Be having a whale of a time. I'll see you. Between you and me, Kev, though, I'm dreading it living on me own. Oh, it'll be your own place. You'll be able to have it exactly how you want it. I mean, the first thing I'm going to get myself is a record player. 
I might even get a CD player and a fridge full of ice cold beers. You? Yeah, and we'll paint it bright and we'll have posters all over the wall. We? What? We're gonna get a place we can share? Yeah, of course we are. Oh, okay, really? I thought that was understood. I mean, I'll be sorry to leave Mrs. O's like, but I don't want to risk losing you. <laughs> you better tell her. Yeah, suppose I better add her. Oh, Kev, I can't wait till we find somewhere now. Oh, buck up, Ivy, what's wrong? Oh, he's left me in charge. Auntie wiley has gone on his honeymoon and they're all trying to run rings round me. Oh, you never mind them, love. Well, I wouldn't, but if everything's not right by the time he gets back, I'm the one that's in the doghouse. Mm, there's no justice, right, is there? Not where some fellas are concerned, there ain't no. Talking about fellas, are you? I'm just going to run now. You are what, Duckworth? Well, I'm going for a driving lesson. I, I just popped in to tell you. My word, I thought it must be for a champagne reception at the Ritz. Will you be able to drive in that skirt? Why, was over there? Everything. I mean, it's skin tight, isn't it? Well, you don't want things to get way, do you? So I'll be a bit late back, Ivy, all right? No, it's not all right, Vera. Well, well Peter's waiting outside and it's too late to change, Ivy. Uh, sorry. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Sounds to me as if you want to watch that driving instructor, Jack. You can drive her away for all I care. This is heaven. Sitting with you. Not caring about anything for once. Shouldn't you be there? No. I'm tired of routine. I get Nicky up, get him the breakfast, drop him at school, frying stuff all day long, picking him up, making his tea. I deserve this. I deserve you. I'm worried sick, actually. If Brian finds out, oh, God, imagine. You scared of him? I'm scared of what it would do to everybody. The family, you know. I mean, the longer this goes on, the deeper we get into it, the more chance there is of one of us getting hurt. Look, when Brian gets back, I'll be back with Brian. This is so important to me, Ian feel like this again. I just want to make it last for as long as I can. You don't blame me for that, dear. I wouldn't dream of it. Come on, let's go for a drive. Good thinking. All right, Jenny. How are you? How's your dad feeling this morning? All right, I think right. Just thought he might have uh, been feeling a bit lousy when he woke up this morning. Why should he? Well, people usually do, don't they, when they cause trouble for other people. They get up feeling dog rough, biting the pillar. Oh, I never win at this game. And he told you what he did last night in the Rovers. He's old enough to do whatever he wants. Yeah, it's a pity he's not wise enough, though, isn't it? Oh, he started coming the big man, didn't he? Started poking his nose into my business. There I am, having a bit of armless banter with Gloria, and he starts getting all shirty. I put him right, of course, and then he starts getting the old pub on his side. Gets me shoved out of my own local. Why are you whining to me for? If you've got something against me, Dad, then you talk to him about it. Not fit to talk to, darling. You can't have a man-to-man -man discussion with him. He's got to be in the middle of the big crowd so he can get them all on his side so he can pull the generation gap stump. Oh, I'm going on. Hey, yeah, you can listen. You tell him to stay right out of my way. So he wants to do his muckraking, he can do it in his own local. Oh. All right? Are you that enough steam again? You know you should have joined any heavy metal singing, Sarah. You can keep your conk out and all. Oh, charming. How are you, Phyllis? Oh, suffering. Do you know your girl's gone off again and left Martin in charge? He's turned into a meddling maniac. Dusty settling, Phyllis. We've got some dust on this flying pan here. See what I mean? We'll get back to it. Did she say where she was going, Phyllis? Did she, Eckers like? Was there another phone call, you know, like yesterday? No, she just went off, leaving me in charge. Mm. I'll, I'll call back later, tell her. Yeah, see well, you. I love. Oh, there's some funny business going on everywhere you look. What was that? 
did everything right, but then you tried to move away in third instead of first. Oh, that's me, you know, trying to run before I can walk. Now just go through your gears yeah. and remind yourself of the positions. All right? Clutch in. First, second, third, fourth. Mm. All right? Can we do it again? <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. Back to neutral. Yeah. And begin. All right. Step on the gas a bit. Yeah. Release the clutch slowly. And away we go. Oh yeah, I'm driving. Eight feet, so I'm driving. Feel safer out here. Oh, I guess. Well, it must be a few years since he used the old back seat technique. Oh, I'm an expert. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Brian being a garage mechanic and a Catholic, we do most of our coaching in cars. You know, I think a big van with a four-poster in the back would suit me better. <laughs> right, Kev, let's get going. Oh, now, there's no need to go giving yourselves indigestion. Well, flats go fast, Mrs Ogden. We've got to be ahead of the game. I'll, uh, put a bit of makeup on. That's if you don't mind me using your bathroom. No, so long as you leave it the way you found it. <laughs> well, she's changed her tune, hasn't she? Yeah, I, uh, think I can explain that. Myself. I must say I'm pleased to see it. I'm sorry about the pressure I put on her, but... Well, boyfriend and girlfriend in the same house. It's just not right. See, this flat we're looking for, it's going to be a flat for two. For two? What? You mean you and... Yeah. I'm sorry I've not told you sooner, like... Oh, um, Kevin. I didn't want to upset you, did I? Oh, this is terrible. You're going from here to live over the brush? Folk will say I drove you to it. Oh, it's what I want. I love Sally. Well, if you do, why do you want to cheapen her like that? Well, wouldn't be. We'd be setting up home together. She's never had a home of her own before. Not a decent one. But you're not wed, Kevin. You're not even engaged. Oh, but we will be. When? Well, soon. Look, if she leaves here on her own, I'd lose her. No. No, not if your love were right, you wouldn't. You'd be able to think clearer. Oh, this way it'll just be a terrible mess. You won't know what you mean to one another. Are you ready, Kev? Yeah, come in. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Hill. Don't you want to uh, unburden yourself of it? What about? We well, ain't up. In the entire time you told me what's going on, Gail. Nothing's going on. Then why were you away from work today again for most of the day? Second day running. I fancied a bit of a break. Ooh. Not like you. Fancy a bit of a break. Oh, well, it is at the moment, all right. I'm sick of behaving like a robot. I just need to get out and breathe a bit of fresh air. Think mm. about things. What things? What you got to think about, eh? Huh? Hmm? Nikki, go and play upstairs, okay. love. I think it'd be nicer there, won't it? Yeah. Good boy. Good. See you later. What's all this? Ordering Nikki about? What's going on, ma'am? What's going on? That's what I want to know, lovey. What's going on? What's going on between you and Ian? Yeah, come on. I'm not going to be fobbed off any longer. I know you too well. Brian away, skipping off work. Phone calls from mysterious Australians. I don't have to be flipping Sherlock Holmes, do I? I like him. He's a nice guy. We have a laugh. So, you don't deny you've been seeing him while Brian's away, then? Once or twice. I'm allowed, aren't I? His family. It's just very dangerous, lovey. You know what people are like around here. Well, if everybody thinks like you, I'm in trouble, aren't I? Oh! So it's all innocent, is it good? Because if I thought you was risking everything just to throw everything away on some little Australian with a suntan... He's not that! Oh. I resent this, ma'am. You interfering like this in my life. You've no right to come poking your nose in, stirring up bad feeling. I'm trying to stop bad feeling. You're trying to Gail. stop good feeling. If I want to feel alive again, feel loved again, 
Why shouldn't I? Oh, girl, you fool. You silly, silly little fool. Why shouldn't I, ma'am? What about all Brian's bits on the side? I mean, what do you think he's doing at this moment, now? He's in some pub somewhere, posing about, giving the glad eye. Well, why shouldn't I have a bit of fun? It's different for men, Gail. Why is it? Well, th they don't have to keep on together. Well, they should. Brian should. Because I'm sick of being a drudge, which is what this marriage has made me. Of course I want Nicky and Brian and all this. No one can go on living the life year in, year out for other people. You know that, ma'am. You've got to stop it, love. I blame myself. I've been such a terrible example. Oh, is that what you're worried about? No. How it should reflect no. on you? No! It's you! It's that little lad up there. It's Brian, if he ever finds out. He won't unless you tell him. Thank goodness he's back today, any road. You won't be daft enough to carry on under his nose, I hope. Do you know, I never thought I'd see you looking so hard-faced, Gil. For goodness sake, pull yourself together before you ruin your life. And a few other people's and all. Uh, thanks for keeping them on one side, Alf. I uh, suddenly remembered a phone call I had to make. Oh, that were it, was it? That were it, yeah. Now then, can you direct us to Peachaloo Place? I want to drop in and have a look at that uh, kitchen unit warehouse I got. You know, there. I've told him the way once, but he won't believe me, yeah, will he? We don't want to be driving around in circles all night, oh, do we? Well, you just go left here, down by Viaduct, then you turn left into Victoria Street. You, you walk along, you go up Nightingale Street, and then you turn right into Curzon Street. You go past the precinct, and it's on your right. Yeah. Is that what you hey. said? Yes, it was. Pardon an old lady's curiosity, but what was all that argy-bargy between you and that Duckworth boy? What do you mean, Mrs Pierce? You know very well what I mean. It happened this afternoon. What was that, Jenny? What did he say? Oh, it was nothing. He was just chatting me up. <laughs> well, it didn't sound like that to me. Jenny, what did he say? Forget it, Dad. Come on, let's go and have a look at these Jenny, things. I want to know what he said. Now, come on out with it. Well, it was just something about telling you to watch your mouth in future and not to spoil things for him in his own pub. I don't know what it all meant. I'd forgotten all about it. He's done it again. Well. Another pipe, please, Bet. Hey, you're not tanking up again, are you? And why shouldn't that it's a free country? So long as there's no bother again from you tonight. I'm being as good as gold, aren't I, Gloria? Yeah, he's behaved himself tonight. Hey, up here comes a flaming lovebird. Now, don't go winding yourself up again. Well, just watch me drink a minute, will you? I want a word with Kat. Cheers, right. Bet. Kevin. Hello, Mr. Joe. Will I get you one? No, thanks, love. I've got one in my hand there. I, I just wanted to ask how you got on. Hmm. All right, thanks. Can I have a bite now, please, Gloria? Yeah. They're not as bad as we thought, really. They're expensive, but uh, it'll be worth it not to be treated like kids. Yes, well, I only wanted to say uh, don't go rushing into anything you're not sure of, will you? Because we could muck along for a bit longer, providing there's no funny business. Well, uh, thanks very much. We'll keep that in mind. Only we're keen on life and we don't want to get sidetracked. We reckon we should be out of yours for what weekend they sell. Yeah. Hey, you. Blame me, Nora. What have I done now? I'll tell you what you've done and don't say anything because I might not be able to hold back like I did last night. Now, I don't care what you say about me to anybody, but you leave my daughter out of your little games, you understand? It's taken me a long time to win the respect of that girl. I'm not having somebody like you destroying it now. Have you got that? You're a demolition man, mate, not me. What did you say? I said you're a demolition. You what? Sorry, Rita. You're, you're right. Rita, that man's a maniac. You're right. I just like laying all over again. Oh. What hit me? Oh, hello, Jenny. Hey, what happened last night? How do you mean? Well, my dad's in a right old state. He said something happened in the Rovers. Oh? He won't say what, though. I mean, my dad's usually dead happy in the morning, but he's standing in our kitchen like he's been shot. <laughs> what went on? 
I'm uh, not really sure, Jenny. Was it something to do with Terry? Uh, yeah, I think so, but um, I don't really want to talk about it if you don't mind. Oh, come on. Please, Jenny. Oh, great, another one. Thanks a bunch. Hello. Hello, Alan. Look, there's uh, a lot of people I've got to apologise to, so I might as well start with you. I'm sorry. It's all right. How's Terry? Oh, he's all right, you know, just bruises, nothing broken. Thank God for that. Yeah. See, I don't mind him slagging me off. I mean, he can say what he likes about me, but he's got to learn to leave Jenny out of it. Now, if that sounds like an excuse, it's not meant to be. I'm sorry for what happened, I really am. Yeah. Well, I'd best get on, Alan. Bye. Bye now. It was a beauty girl. A real beauty. We knew we wanted it as soon as we saw it. What took you so long? Well, he's playing hard to get, wasn't he? The bloke who owned it. He wanted a thousand um... pounds over the odds. You also know what we did, right? We left the phone number of our digs and we waited for him to crack. And did he? Oh, yeah. Just like Mark said he would. Oh. Eight o'clock next morning, the phone were ringing. So we had to, well, Mark had to go and get the cash. Then we had to collect it. And when you just bought an Aston Martin, you don't rush home, do you? <laughs> what a car. So, you know, the difference between that and the sort of car I'll get to on is the difference between a racehorse and a donkey on the beach. What colour is it? It was marine blue. Hey, and do you know what else we bought? What? Upstairs, on me and your mum's bedside table. Go on. Go and have a look. Where are you? You had a good time, then? Yeah, yeah, great time. Mark enjoy himself? He always does, doesn't he, love? He's the sort of bloke that makes the most out of any situation. You know, girl, he's banking on his first million in a couple of years. Great. You think we were playing around, don't you? Mm? No. Well, we weren't. I promise. No, no, I weren't. Thank you, love. Glad you had a good time. Anyway, Kathy calls. Mummy, Mummy, look at the brat. Oh, that's lovely. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> Dad it was shocking to see Vera. It made me feel quite sick. I mean, oh. seeing Terry stuck there and Alan. Yeah, he's an animal. It just shows you never know what people are like, do you? Well, I knew it. Look at his eyes. He's evil. Alan Bradley, of all people. Oh. That maniac taking a bottle to our Terry. Oh, it wasn't a bottle. And if he shows his face in here, tell him out. We don't want his sort round here. Look, Vera, I know you're upset and it's understandable. Oh, kid, but... I mean, you want to see his flipping face. It wasn't a bottle, though, Vera. Well, it must have been some at Sidewood's on, because I thought he'd have knocked bells out of that tow rag in a fair fight. Well... Oh. OK, you got something to say? Hey, j just look at his face. How are you feeling, love? Great. Never better. Now, if you don't mind, can I do my shopping? I'll have to stand here for the next half hour. Carry on. Thank you. Well, uh, we've had a phone call from Susan. All right for some, isn't it? Having a wonderful time in Barbados and staying on a few days more. Oh, don't it turn you green? <laughs> I could do with some of that myself, I'll tell you. <laughs> you got all you want, lad? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, you want to get yourself round to that police station now, Terry. I mean, you've got witnesses. Get that animal put behind bars. Yeah, Man, 46, sir. Yeah, he right. think twice about beating somebody up with half a dozen coppers on his back. Listen, stop talking stupid, all right? Eh? See you later. Didn't expect to see you today. No. Not that I'm complaining. Did you sleep well? Like a log. I needed it. So, when shall I see you again? Brian's back now, isn't he? So? I mean, Alan Bradley, who'd have thought it of him? Seems impossible to believe. It does. It was just like looking at a completely different person. Exactly like Len. I wonder if he's got a history of it. I wonder. See, young Jenny sent they were summit up. She were full of questions when she came to do the papers. I mean, what do you say to her? Yes, Jenny, your dad's a nice bloke. Just occasionally goes berserk and beats hell out of a fella in a pub. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing. I just changed the subject and packed her off, which is exactly what not to do, but I couldn't think of anything cleverer. Gail. I only came here to see how the land lies. I didn't come to make arrangements. He's back now. All that happened 
It wasn't because Brian was away, was it? No. Look, I can't talk now. Um, after the dinner rush, I'll meet you outside the town hall. Three Gail. o'clock. Have you finished with this? Okay. Three o'clock. And if father will this salt, I'll be round to that Bradley fella, and he won't walk on his legs again. Oh, all this eye for an eye stuff here is no good. So you see your honest son then, not silly. Have you seen him? It was me that brought him home, remember? And what did you do for that Bradley fella there? Buy him a drink. Vera, cool it. Look, keep out of it, will you? Vera, this is my pub. What goes on here is my business. Now, I know you're upset. Nothing gets helped by cracking glasses. Cool it. Assault and battery, that's what it was, you know. I told him, I said, prosecute. And is he going to? No. Probably best. But you'd think his only father would do something, wouldn't you? You'd think he'd be round there and break his flaming legs. And are you going to? Well, I thought about it, and I thought, all things considered, best let sleeping dogs lie. It's probably best. Mm. See, Adrian, some of said as he left the shop. Oh, yeah. He said Ken were up in court tomorrow. Oh, well, yes, that's right, Audrey, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, love. What is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's a terrible crime, Audrey. He's wanting to adopt Tracy. <laughs> Good to see the judge in his chambers. Oh, oh, trust me, eh? So Ken's going to be a dad for real, is it? Well, legally he will. And she'll be Tracy Barlow if all goes well. Oh, good. I shall keep my fingers crossed. Thanks, love. Ta-ra. ta Oh, hello, wife. Oh, hello, Audrey. You off? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to have a word with Gail. Uh, huh. Not cooking for your long-lost relative, then? No, he goes his own way. Yeah, don't he just... When is he going back to the great outdoors, anyone? I'm not sure. A couple of days, why? Oh, I just wondered. I just wondered why, if he's, if it's so wonderful and exciting over there, what he's doing over here. Uh, could I have an orange juice, please? Yeah, you can, Ivy. Yeah. Hey, weren't that a terrible do last night? I've just heard about it. Yeah. What started it? Well, according to Alan, Terry had been calling him to Jenny and he saw Red. Is that all? I don't know, but that's what Alan said. Well, uh, the next time you see Alan Cock, which I hope will be soonish, tell him he's not so popular down here, will you? Not so much that he's uh, barred, we just don't want his custom for a while. All right. All right, Ben. Is this seat taken, love? Oh, feel free, love. Thanks. I was just off anyway. No, come on, don't rush off on my account. Oh, duty calls, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> hey. I've just been sat over there thinking, I know that face. Put it there, you're a better man than I am. I'm sorry? Any man who will sit in the same car that our beer is steering has got my total admiration. <laughs> oh, yes. Mrs. Duckworth's husband. I remember. We talk about the SAS, but the man who teaches her to drive is, is in a class on his own. Audrey, you are looking at true grit. Doesn't surprise me. And, no, but seriously, no. I don't, how do you cope? I mean, day in, day out, because the only one thing worse than a woman driver, that is a woman learner. <laughs> you must have nerves like rock. You know, it's a funny thing, Mr. Duckworth. I see a lot of drivers, as you can imagine. And in general, though it's silly to draw comparisons, the women do tend to be better than the men. Well, more prepared to uh, listen and learn rather than just assume they know it all already. <laughs> I mean, take your wife, for example. One of my better pupils. I don't think it'll be long before she has her license. Anyway, thanks for your good wishes. See you, love. Bye, love, He's got more grease than Jackson's chipping, fellas. Gail, Gail, have you got a second? Well, only a second. Are you eating? Uh, no, no, I think I'll wait. I just want to have a quick word. Oh, yeah. Brian's back, then. Look, I've told you, Mum, it's nothing to do with whether Brian's here or where he is. It's nothing to do with him, Gail. Just be careful. I'm all right. It's a game you can't win, It's not I a can't... game. I love Ian. How many times do I have to say it? What about him? I think so. Oh, love. Do you know you're more like me than I thought? There's no point in talking about Gail, it. Gail, he's a bloke on holiday. He's over here having a good time where nobody can see him. He doesn't care about you. You'll come into your life, pull you inside out. He'll be on the next plane back. I know, love. I've been there too many times. I've never interfered in your I'm life. I'm not interfering in your life. God forbid. <laughs> Just do so much for me, would you? Just stop and think. Please. 
You've got a lot to lose. Broad daylight. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed, I'm just married. Let me do the worrying. For God's sake, Gail, anyone can see us. All right, let's go back to the house. Which house? My house. I can take an hour. Oh, come on, Gail, what about Brian? He's at work. He can come home, can't he? He won't, though, will he? I don't care anyway. I care. What's the matter with you? You don't want me anymore, do you? Oh, Gail, Brian's back, don't you understand? It's not like it was. You don't want me. I didn't say that. I'm just trying to get you to understand what's going on here. All right. You see? Thanks a lot, Ian. Oh. Hello, Donna. It's Alan Bradley. Yeah. Listen, I'm sorry I didn't come in this morning. What? No, no, I, I, I just felt a bit rough, that's all. No, no, I'm OK now. Uh, just one of those things, you know. Um, listen, has anything come up? Ah. Oh. Well, listen, what'll... What'll do is, uh, I'll sort it all out when I come in tomorrow. Yeah, don't worry about it now. OK? All right, then, love, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, bye now. Didn't go to work, then? No. Uh, fancy coffee? Well, I've got to get some things round to the cleaners, Alan. Oh, OK. Uh, any news of Terry? Well, he apparently went to work, so he can't be that bad. Oh. How's Bert? Oh, Bert's all right. I was thinking of uh, dropping in tonight and apologising. Yeah, um, Alan, she asked me to tell you. Well, I'm bad. Well, for a while, she said. Well, uh, yeah, fair enough. Right, well, I'll see you then. Can I have some tea? For the last time, Nicky, will you stop going on about that space invader and get from under my feet? Come on, Nicky, let's go and see your Uncle Terry, eh? Just take him, him up Martin, a bit. take him anywhere. Go on, you little space invader. Come. There you go. Nice one. Yeah. Oof. Not right, a pretty then. sight, though, is it, eh, Nicky? Oof. I reckon that's what the gremlins from Mars must look like, don't you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be cheering me up. Oh, the trouble is, don't tell you. With a face like that, it's hard to know where to start, isn't it, Nicky? Yeah. <laughs> what is it, Gail, love? Sometimes I just feel like a bit of peace and quiet, that's all. Oh, I don't mean just now. I mean... the last few days. It's nothing. It's Brian, isn't it? Swanning off to Edinburgh like no. that. No. Do you think they've been up to no good, him and his mate? It's nothing to do with Brian. I've no reason to believe he was up to anything. Well, is it something to do with where you've been going off to? What? Well, like this afternoon and yesterday. You want to keep your nose in your own business. I'm not a slave to this cafe, and one person I'm definitely not responsible to for my actions is you. All right, Mrs Duckworth? Right, now take your time, and this time you're completely on your own, all right? Right. So that's that door. Seat belt and mirror, right? Very good. And then? Um, check and brake. Start engine up. Mirror again. And signal. Is he still looking? Don't bother about him. <laughs> I'm not bothered about him. I'll flip and show him. Just watch this. Very good, Mrs. Duckworth. Very good indeed. I'm a shocker, aren't I? Gin and tonic, quarter to six in the evening. Oh, you're all right, cop. It's when it's a quarter to six in the morning you have to worry. <laughs> that has been known, you know. Here you are, lovely. Well, thanks, old Ruth. Smashing. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Lovely. So you enjoyed Edinburgh, did you? Oh, yeah. It's a great city, is that, you know? I'd like to spend some time there, get to know it a bit. Perhaps next time you should take Gail and Nicky. <laughs> Steady on. Didn't sound like it that much. 
Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe I could. You ought to do things together, you know, Brian. We do do things together. Well, perhaps a bit more, then. You know, she'd take a bit of interest in her. She's not been herself lately. She thinks I've been playing around, doesn't she? She hasn't said that. It's a bit rough, you know, Audrey. Just because a guy goes away, you know, doesn't mean he's going to run off with the first woman he sees, does it? It does with some, yeah. Well, I'm not one of them. Well, just take her out, Ma. Give her a good time. And when we get to Australia, Audrey, there'll be no stopping her, will there? No, Brian. Well, I'm fed up, I'm telling you. I mean, it's all right for him, and it's stuck off each in Barbados. What happens next week when he wants another couple of days off? Does he phone back and say he's not coming back? Things seem to be going smoothly enough. Oh, do they? Do they? Well, it's no thanks to you, is it? I mean, come on, Emily. They're five minutes here, ten minutes there. They're out at house, round at post office, and I can't stop them, can I? How can I say up to Vera when I know I'm playing bingo with her a couple hours later? Well, I'm sure it's not my place. It is your fault. I'm not management. I mean, I'm not even full time. What are they going to think if I suddenly start saying they've got to do this and that? They know they've got to do this and do that. All they want is confirming, don't they? What they really need is bowling. But failing that, they want somebody at that side of the fence, which you are and I'm not. I think it would be sheer presumption on my part. I really do. OK. OK, Emily. Well, when Baldwin comes back to an empty workroom next week, we know who to blame, don't we? Hey, 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 are you two supposed to be here having a drink? We have to get some bouncers in here. Hi, they're right at back at shop. Just near the soaps. All oh, right, thanks. Right, that's 571, please, Mavis. Yeah. And that's the last time I put my hands in the till today. It's a lovely feeling, isn't what it? What is? Sticking round it till. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the end of a working day. It is lovely. The only trouble is you've got to wait till now to get it. Yeah. I mean, if I'm at half past ten in the morning... Aye, I know, and you're still putting for overtime. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, right. You're back from Edinburgh, then. Oh, uh, looks like it, Mavis. Right, you won't forget I'm not in tomorrow morning now. I won't forget. Are you uh, going somewhere nice? Going to court, Brian. Ken's adoption of Trace is going through, so hopefully we'll be coming back with another little barlow. Anyway, good luck with it, love. Thanks, love. Yeah, all the best. Thank you. Oh, Bye. hey, there's a mate of yours in here. Ah, choosing deodorant. Go up and sniff some out. <laughs> How do we in? Oh, hi, Brian. Hey, you saved me a job. I was going to look you out this evening. Yeah? Yeah, come round tonight. Oh, no, I don't think Listen, listen, uh, I've just had order onto me about Gail. Being a bit, uh a bit off while I was away. I think she suspects me playing around or something. Oh. Anyway, come round tonight, right? We'll have, a, we'll have a bite to eat and a drink of wine, eh? Ah, oh, look... Come uh, on, you choose the wine. And you choose and I'll pay. How's that for a bargain? Yeah, OK. You can tell her about the dingoes and the kangaroos, eh? That should bring a smile to her face. You're still talking about leaving, then? Well, the application's enough. We're just waiting for the word now. Well, come on, Ian, what wine are we having, red or white? What's so different about Australia? Well, for a start, over there you get more of a chance. You get none at all here. I mean, look at me, Alf, right? Just starting to get on my feet, getting a bit of money in the bank, and what happens? A tax bill, straight back to square one. Oh, do they not pay tax in Australia? Then? Oh, people over there get encouraged to work. It's a totally different outlook. I mean, look at them that's going over, right? Within five years, I've got a thriving business. You can't do that, here. Yeah, look, Brian, a lot of folk go out there, you know, and they come straight back with the tails between their legs because they haven't got the nouse. If you've not got the nouse here, you're not going to suddenly get it by swapping continents. You get a downside more of a chance, that's all I know. Yeah, but you've got to want to go, you know. That, I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, if you're just going because you want to leave here, forget it, because a loser is a loser no matter which part of the earth he's on. Am I right? Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, look, I'll take that and we'll... Uh... Have a bottle of white wine. Yeah, I'll buy the wine. No, it's all right. Forget it, Brian. <coughs> oh. Hello, love. Hello. Uh, could you do us a favour? I've just uh, just made a brew. Could you come in for a chat? Okay. I'll uh, I'll get my key. Right. Oh, yeah, come in, sit down. Thanks. Um, say, sugar? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing to be worried about, you know. <laughs> I'm not worried, Al. Well, that's something anyway, eh? Uh, thing is, you see, um, I've always had these tempers ever since I was a kid. Um, and the thing is that, uh... Thanks. Well, the thing is that when you're a kid, of course, uh, you haven't got the strength to do any serious damage. And whereas, um, when you're a kid, you know, 
the other kids respect you because you can fight. Nobody respects a grown-up that does that. I did hear that uh, he was thinking of prosecuting. He's not. Not now. Really? Apparently he wants to let it lie. Well, I can go for that, eh? Have you told Jenny about it? No. I think you should. Before she hears it from somewhere else. Yep. <sighs> well, I mean, it's not as if you go looking for trouble, is it? <laughs> hey, we should have bought some Australian wine in. What do they call it? Coke de Bondi. <laughs> <laughs> they call it lager, don't they? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hey, girl, should have heard Alf today in the shop. Going off about folk who want to go to Australia because they can't cope here. God, it's a wet weekend. Oh, take no notice. I don't. Talk about trying to bring you down, though. I don't think he meant you, Brian. I think he was talking generally. You don't know Alf, mate. Well, he's jealous and got good cause to be. I think if I were going to spend the rest of my days in the end of Coronation Street, I'd be feeling sick. Yes, you, mate. We've got a lot to thank you for because without you, we'd still be thinking like Alf, planning on seeing our lives out here. <laughs> It's Nicky Bryan. It's weird thinking it, though, isn't it? Just a few weeks ago, we were stuck here. No dreams, no prospects, and you walked in. Bingo. Now things are totally different. I'm glad about that. We were in a rut, mate. Now, thanks to you, we can look forward to a new future. Shall be said. I'm sorry about today, Ian. I'm sorry I couldn't be it. Come to the cafe tomorrow. We'll talk about it. I won't be here tomorrow, girl. Where are you going? Home. Australia. You're not going tomorrow. Yeah, I've decided to go earlier. What about me? Your life's with Brian, Gail and Nicky. No! Yeah? Uh, yeah? Well, come upstairs and say goodnight to Nicky, will you? He wants a kiss from his Australian uncle. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, I'm on my way. What have you done to you, Sonny? Eh? She's dressed you up like a sack of potatoes. You do it if you're so damn clever. Hey. Hey. Calm down, I was only kidding. What's up? It's nothing. I'm just... You're working too hard, love. That's your trouble. That damn cat. Just don't, Brian. I'm all right. Gail, don't worry, love. Look, things are looking up, aren't they? We've got the appointment with Australian House. And before you know where you are, we're going to be on that plane heading straight for the sun. And that's the end of cast for you. I'm all right, Brian! Just stop going on about it. OK? OK? I don't buy that story of Ian's, you know, about him going early because he's missing his mates. Are you? It's the trouble with these Aussies. They can't stay ten minutes in one place. Just getting really pallid with him when he's off. Gail, do you want me to ring Phyllis and tell you you're not feeling too good? Just go to work. All right. All right. <coughs> I'm going. Come on. Gail, have a word with Ian. Tell him to stay on a bit longer. He'll listen to you. Come on, sunshine. Let's get you to school, eh? Go ahead, Elbow. Jimmy, have you seen a green fourth cap folder anywhere? Is this it? take all my stuff to school, will you? Well, there's no need to be sack. It's only the first time I've taken it. Oh, yes, and the rest. Hey, did you really come tear it up with the other night? Why, has anybody said anything? Who do you mean, anybody? I mean, anybody. No, you don't. You mean Rita. I mean, she's the only one who is anybody. Jenny, has anybody said anything? Nope, not even Rita. They're all playing cagey. Hey, how hard did you hit him? Oh, it could have been worse. How do you mean? Well, we could have had the policing, couldn't we? Did you hit him that hard? Come on, school, before you get a wallop. Oh, eat your heart out, girls. My dad's Clint Eastwood. Gail, you seem to have given me the wrong order. I wish I could do justice to that, but I'm afraid mine. Here's the toast. <laughs> Just about six and sevens this morning. We all have days like that, don't we? When we're overworked, you mean? I'm getting five a week at the moment. Oh, <laughs> Which is a lot on my plate. Especially with this place and a family to look after. Yes, I suppose that's one blessing, Phyllis. We've only ourselves to bother about. That's true. 
A cup of chow for me, mate, fellas, please. A kangaroo milk and two sugars. Uh, not for me, I'm not stopping. Uh, Gail, have you got a minute, please? Right, me lad over here is having a farewell drink in the Rovers at dinner and he wants you to come along. And that's going to give you a chance to knock a bit of sense into him, eh? Stop him from going. Right, I'll see you both later. Well, I thought you'd still be on the pubs from what I've been hearing. You've been hearing wrong then, haven't you? Hey, they said they got a bit of physical. Looks like they're right and all. My day is gonna come, don't you worry. I'd watch it if I were you, mate. You sound like a bit of a handful. God, you don't have to pick them, don't you? I brought you a couple of singers for not so busy. <laughs> Why did you come? I wasn't going to. Brian dragged me in. I'd like you to come for a drink, though. You'd look better if you did. Is that all you care about? How it looks? I don't want you to go again. I don't want you to go. How can I sit? Be careful. Yeah. What do you say? Let's be sensible. We had a great time. No harm was done. Just go, Ian. Just go. No, I don't Ian, anything. go! Please. See you there about 1.30, OK? See you later. Bye, Bye, you're off today, then, are you? Uh, yeah, later on. Well, you haven't got room for one more in your bags, have you? I'm yeah. <laughs> afraid not. <laughs> Same here. Yeah, see you, mate. Here, where you going? See a girl wants to look up at him. Leave her. Hey, why? Because I said so. Isn't that enough? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> She's still upset about Brian skiving off to Edinburgh, isn't she? That's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> You're not daft, are you? Not me, Phyllis. No way. <laughs> you fear that? Kamikaze pilots see you. What do you mean? Just nip it into the corner shop, tell her. They, they don't sell them. What? Tranquilizers. That's what you have to do, isn't it? Audrey! Sorry, love. Uh, can you just help this young lady with a box of crisps? Yes, of course. What sort do you want? Uh, cheese and onion, please. We're all right for this. OK. No, Deirdre, this morning. She's in court. Oh. Oh. What's she been up to now? No, nothing criminal. It's just a changing of Tracy's name to Barlow in front of a judge of... Oh. Oh. She's in the knee, I love her. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, right, Al. How much do I owe you? Uh, oh, I'll settle up later. I'll see better about it. Oh. All right, then. Yeah. See ya. Oh. Bye, love. Sure. Right, that's just Thank five you. pounds and tuppers, please. Call it a straight fiver. Are you sure? Ah, go on. Would you mind, I'm in a bit of a rush. I'll be my oh. Hey! Uh, aren't you very do a driving instructor? That's right. Ooh, I'll like a candle for you. Uh, she's a lot better than everybody thinks. <laughs> she need to be, love. <laughs> Sorry, love, I wouldn't put it in if I'd have known. That's all right, love. Thanks, Al. See you. Hello. Um, Audrey, mm -hmm. are you coming to Rovers? He's having a farewell do. He's not to do with me, either. Well, he's something to do with Gail. I thought you might like to say goodbye to him. Yeah, you're right. I would. Right. I'll see you down there. Right. I'll right. pass one, he said. Okay. So. We'll get down to it, Chipper. You're not paralysed. Stop getting there. It's paying for it. And if you keep pooking these lessons, we're going to finish up in a bankruptcy court. Look, you speak for yourself, Charlie. Because if I run short, I can always up your housekeeping. And look, if you're short of something to do, go around and sort that Bradley fella out. How can I give you more money for housekeeping, eh? Out your tips. Out of all that money that I never heard out about. Even you can't get blood out of a stone. No, but I can have a damn good try. Right, love. What's first? Um, shall we start with a three-point turn? Castle Street, Edgeley. Is it on my way to the airport? Yeah, turn left at New York. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not so bad. Uh, just get on the motor when you love you then, quick sticks. You are going by, have you? Oh, yeah. Oh, just that's going to cost you a fortune, that's all. Yes, and Doris is going to play Hamlet with you, leaving it till you're on your way home before you go and see her. Well, blame Uncle Bert for having so many sisters. Well, they can't all be my favourite auntie, can they? Go on with you. <laughs> Ooh, heck, it's that time I'll get shot. Right, uh, bye-bye, love you, and uh, you take care. Same to you. And thanks for having me. Been a pleasure. It has. Auntie, been a pleasure. And I mean that. 
So, next time you pass it. Don't drop in. Now, listen, you told Doris that she'd been promising to meet me for the last two years. Yeah, I will. Okay. So. Bye. So, any more for another drink? Oh, well, I won't say no, seeing as I'm off the leash. You stay where you are. I'll get these. Right. Florian. Yes. Pity girl can make it. Mm. Is it? I think it's just as well myself in. What's she been saying to you? She doesn't have to say anything, love. I'm a mother. I'm just glad that you go in before it went too far. But from what I hear, it went quite far enough. I didn't want it. Yeah, I know, love, I know. You never do. Hey, I thought your plan was until seven. No, it isn't, but I've got to visit Auntie Doris and I want to spend a fair bit of time in duty free. <laughs> Promise me mates all sorts of goodies and heaven help me if I don't get them. <laughs> and you don't want to miss your plane, do you? <laughs> no, no. Cheers. Cheers, love it. Cheers. Alan really is sorry, you know, Beth. He'd have come round himself to apologise, but well, under the circumstances... Very wise and all. Yeah, but he's just not like that bit, not normally. <laughs> so he just... well, snapped, I suppose. I mean, look at all the trouble he's gone to over Jenny. The pains he's gone to to give her a good home. He's not evil, you know, or I'm not like saying that. he is, love. But a bust-up like that is just not good for custom to send out her furniture. Well, it wasn't just Alan, you know. It was Terry and all. If he hadn't gone on at him. I knew it was. I was here, remember? So, he's not welcome you then? Not even to say he's sorry? Well, let's just say I'll sleep easier at night if he keeps his head down for a day or two yet. Let things cool down a bit. Well, Terry Duckworth can come and go as he pleases, I suppose. Don't you worry. I've got his card well and truly marked. I should be keeping a very careful eye on that young fella, believe you me. Once step out of line, he'll be through that door so fast his feet won't touch the ground. Oi, you! You weren't thinking of sloping off without a goodbye kiss, were you? Oh, no. Come here, Grouchy. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Nice to have met you. Have a good trip. Oh. Yes, love. Go on up here before you break all our hearts. So now we've even played his cards right. He could have had a good time round here. Yeah. I've been making a couple of calls, haven't I? And I've still got a few more to make, too. So, seeing as what a wonderful husband I am, I thought I'd call Rance if you want me to pick Nicky up, take him back to the garage. I'll save you doing it, love, and I can take him home. Yeah, OK. Well, go on, then. Say it. Say what? Don't get him covered in oil. Don't get him covered in oil. You're going to be late? Uh, I might be, yeah. Phyllis might have to get off a bit. OK, we'll fetch some of the battle of uh, Alan on. You OK? Did, um... Did Ian get off OK? Yeah. He's calling him out to see his Andy Doris on the way back to the airport. You know, her lives in Stockport. Still can't work out why he's gone back so early. But still, uh, he did say he wanted to buy some duty-free stuff, didn't he? Well, if that's the way he wants it, love, eh? I'll see you later. See you later. I'll stay on a bit, love, if you want to go early. I'll see. Sorry, I'm late, Al. We had our lunch in a cafe in town. Oh, that's right. Give the game away. How do you go on in court? Great. We had a really good chat. Wasn't he a nice man? Yeah, it was a judge. Oh, a judge, eh? Oh, don't I have the honour of speaking to Miss Tracy Barlow? Yes. So we went out to celebrate and you'd have drunk too much, didn't he? He didn't drink too much. Well, he's sleeping somewhat off. He had a lot to eat, though. He had more potatoes than us. Oh, that was it. He had more potatoes <laughs> than us. Hey, speaking of food, did you uh, remember to restock the cereal shelves? I've not had time. All right. Come on, then. Miss Tracy Barlow, you can help your mum. Oh. It's ironic, isn't it? Tracy becoming a Barlow just as Susan becomes a Baldwin. Ah, well, you know what they say. You win some, you lose some. Can we have uh, two teas, love, please, and uh, anything else? No, not please. Just two teas, please. I'll bring them over for you, love. Hey, oh, there's a taxi pulled up here. It's for me. Hey, what time have you been so saying she swept off? It's becoming to be a habit, isn't it? Yeah. Well, go on. Eh? He said it was important. Now I've got to get back to the papers. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, um, I just wondered if you'd like a run out tonight somewhere. Uh, Goit Valley, somewhere like that? You've dragged us in here to ask me that. Not exactly, no. Um, 
I just felt that I had a bit of explaining to do first. Tip oh, Tala. Thank you. Tala. Explaining? Uh, yeah. About what happened to the Rovers the other night. You don't have to explain to me, Alan. No, I know, but, uh... See, in my case, it's not the first time. It's happened before. A couple of times. I don't go out looking for trouble. Rita really, I don't, but... I could be pushed too far, as Terry Duckworth found to his cost. The problem is that, uh, well, I'm not properly out of the woods for the last time yet. Yeah, uh, it was this bloke who used to come into a club I used to use in Leeds. The sort that couldn't hold his drink, you know. For the first half an hour, he was a laugh a minute, and then he used to get nasty. And for some reason, he always used to pick on me. Well, one night he went too far and walloped. That was it. Next thing I knew, I was up in court. Now, that was nearly two years ago. And they gave me a suspended sentence. That sentence is still hanging over me. That's why it was so stupid of me to get led on like that by Terry Duck. I knew. I knew what the consequences would be if they brought the police in, but... I just couldn't stop myself. Why are you telling me all this? Because I reckon that uh, if we're going to carry on seeing each other, you've got a right to know what sort of a fellow I am. Thank you. That can't have been easy. So, where do we go from here? I thought you said so much about Goit Valley. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, how long will it be? Well, uh, what time is it now? Half uh, an hour at the most. I've just got to see the kids off. I don't wait for them to come back. You can come and give me a hand if you like. Might as well make yourself useful. Get on. This is nice. I thought I'd be making you one. I thought it'd be a change, me making you one. Do you like older men? What? Do you like older men? You know men in the 40s, 50s? Well, I can't say I've really thought about it. Not particularly, I suppose. I like them all. Do you fancy me dad? What is this? No, no, I was just thinking. I mean, the chances are he's going to get married again. And I wouldn't stand in your way if you wanted to have a go. I mean, some girls might have fancy the idea of having a young stepmother, but it won't worry me. Oh, well, I'll uh, bear that in mind. But don't you think your dad might have something to say about it? Him? He don't know what day it is, he's opus when it comes to women. He didn't know how to handle my mum, did he? That's all in the past, isn't it? Yeah. He's not so bad. I like him, though. Took me a while, but I like him. But a flapjack, I met him at school, they're a bit hard on the teeth. Oh. Go on, I'll risk a piece. Hey, I'll tell you what, when my dad comes in, I'll tell him I'm going out, see it's your night off, see if it works. Uh, you better not! Don't forget what I said. Right, come on in, love. So this is where all the coffee goes, is it? <laughs> Have you got one for Rita? She's stopping them. Only while they get changed, we're going for a run out to the Great Valley, aren't we, love? Yes, that's right. Oh, you'll enjoy that. Oh, yeah, you will. Have you been there? Uh, no, no, just what people say, you know. Ah, well, if we ever get there, that is. Hey. Cup of coffee for Rita. I'll get changed, love. You can't win them all. <laughs> Take me with you. Please. Carol, be sensible. I'll come out to you then. Let me come out to you. I don't want to stay. Not without you. 
It's not just Brian you'd be leaving. I only want you. You say that now, but... Gail, listen Please to me. Please don't. Don't. Don't say we had a good time and now it's all over. I can't bear the thought of it all being over. It has to be over. We shouldn't have done what we did and don't let's make it worse. Just... Just let me go. It's best that way. You'll be glad. You want another coffee? What is up with you? You've had a face as long as the wet weekends and you walked in here. Now, what's up? Nothing for you to bother about. Well, that doesn't tell me a lot, does it? Well, I'm sorry, Bet, but it's all you're getting. You know what's going to happen if she gets her licence, don't you? We're never going to get a sniffing in that car. She'll never pass a test. No, won't she? Next time you're out, you have a look, mate. We're going to have to use a bit of sense here and nobble. How do you mean? You mean hamstringer? Not physically, psychologically. We're going to have to nobble her confidence. How? I don't know. I've not thought about yet. Well, I know another time. Yeah, well, you see, that all stuff shows well, by me. Well, There's some right flavours down there. Well, Evening, councillor. Well, what's your poison? And when he snuffs it, what can I do for you? Oh, will we have his money? We will that. In that case, it's definitely the Bahamas. With this lovely lad of yours, of course. A very, very wise choice and all. You'll regret it, because they don't know the meaning of the word subtle to these kids, you know. Oh, what? Subtlety, I've got enough subtlety in my life. I haven't had chubs there. Eh? Are you having a drink, aren't you? Uh, no, I want to go and try and catch Gail at the cafe. Oh, well, uh, save your lovely legs, because she opted somewhere in a taxi about half four. I only left ten minutes since she wasn't back then. Oh, all oh, right. In that case, then I'll have a gin and tonic, please. Large. Well, beer. to me, Gail. Now, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't want to go. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Not a thing. We're the bosses, Gail, you and me. What we say goes. Okay? Okay, come on. Driving instructors, I'd scrap the lot. Bigger comics than Bernard Manning. Make a flaming cat laugh. 
And as for this Peter Baker fella that's been flannelling you, I bet I were driving when he, when he were pushing dinky cars round the carpet. Oh, I'm not saying you can't drive. I mean, you've been driving me, Potty, for years. All I'm saying is you're not getting your hands on that Nova and that's flaming final. What happens when you fail your test, eh? But I shan't fail, shall I? Yeah, if they pass you, they pass rice pudding. <laughs> oh, belt up, Jack. It's a waste of flaming good money, that. Oh, aye. And I suppose all that money you spent on ale, that's been some sort of investment, has it? Look, I happen to think these driving lessons are worth every penny. Apart from all else, they're doing wonders for my morale. Uh, what about mine, eh? That doesn't matter, eh? Oh, look. You can clean the car. I might even give you a lift in it now and again. But you're not getting your flaming hands on them keys. When do I get this ribbon for round my neck like the rest of the flaming pap poodle dead? You think on. You shut up my fry, turn me into a laughing stock, an empty shell of a man, and, and it's you that's gonna suffer. She has got something, though, hasn't she? Rita. I suppose it's what people call class. Well, if it's class, you won't paddle. Study me and no charge. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have the basics, like, it's just a matter of them little touches that add up to poise. Poise. That's the word I was after. Rita's got it in spades. Well, I give her a point or two. But she ain't no Meryl Streep, kiddywinks. And I'll tell you something. If the fella I fancied was where Alan Bradley is, just one little step across that landing, I'd give Meryl Streep a run for her money. Yeah, well, the trouble is I'm the shy type, aren't I? Here. Cut for these. Wear them. Twirl with the band of old. Be a bit flash. Lose a button or two. I would have thought you'd do any good. But you know what? I, I don't think that's what Alan's after. You are? After his display in here the other night? He's no plaster saint, is he? Mind you, I reckon that's what turns Reese on. Bit of the rough stuff, the men she picks. Look at that copper. Tony Coleman. He had a mean streak. Before my time, I think. Oh, it was fairly routine. I saw him first. Rita stepped in. I forgave her. Well, you have to, don't you? But on the quiet, she played dirty pool. Well, there you are, you see. Class, poise, experience. It's first division stuff, isn't it? And what makes it worse, he never comes in the pub now. Well, he's not barred. But he's not on a red carpet job either. Blood and teeth all over the shop, then out for my decor. Time I was inspecting my troops. Fetch your cup, Petal. Not turning up then? No, I'm early. Right, it's all fixed up. You know, Phil, him and Rich on the petrol pumps on the motorway yeah. said they'll give us a lift in his Batmobile. Reckons he can squeeze us in. Oh, well, yeah, I know him. I know, I know that, Phil. Well, if you're going somewhere, can we and Jane come here? We're talking about Sheffield, mate. We're talking about an all nighter, a kinker, yeah. UB40, yeah. the living dead. Your man wasn't like that. Oh. <laughs> Does he live with his mouth? Well, then, Mrs. Ogden won't like it either, eh? Oi, that's well, enough from you, Sprog. Double leg chips, I'm going to have the lady one. Would you want Oh, yeah, out back. Weeping of gas, mate. Oh, can I go through? It's a bit best. It's that Australian do I think. That's all kind, Bosh, now. Hey! Oh, hi, Mum. I thought you'd be busy. Well, I should be. I had two cancellations. I mean, and that's the passing train. You've got a Oh, <laughs> Not all of us can spend a fortune on makeup, can we? What's happened? Nothing's happened. Ian went back. I waved him goodbye at the airport. Everything's normal. You went to the airport? Did I say that? Oh, no. Must have made a mistake. Actually, I saw the plane going overhead. I knew it was Ian's plane because it had Goodbye Gail written down the side. Goodbye Gail. Thanks, but no thanks. Yes, still have egg and chips twice. So, Julian, a knees up. Now, that's what yeah, I'm after. Okay. Yeah? A bit of piccini. Don't be stupid, Gloria. No, a knees up, Julian. Oi, Peter, how about some ale? Look, I'm changing barrels. What about that lot? You want to watch yourself, you know. There's still three million people unemployed out there. But apart from that, my mum is in a very funny mood. When you get your cards here, you'll be getting them at home and all. Who cares? I can always get a billet. You can clip a needle's wings, but you can't tame him. To be honest, she's not said a lot about the honeymoon. Julian, don't be stupid. Well, we've seen all the snaps, and she spent a fortune on presents. I know. Yes, I suppose the last of the big spenders gave you a colourful account. 
actually. His first words were, well, that's me well skint, let's start making it. So that sort of set the tone for the morning. Obviously, they both go ahead tight. I mean, Ken said Sue was equally as brisk. Came in like a bomb, straight down to business, files everywhere, high-pressure stuff on the blower. You know, all very glossy, very um, colour supplement. I'm not sure if I like it. You, um... You don't think it might have been a disaster? Jack, come on! All right! Oh, there she is. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Well, it's happened. The rotten swine's deserted me. So I believe. For a rather stout gentleman called Cyril Worthington. Four thriving retail outlets and not too happy with his supplier. What we call in the trade a three-cigar job. Anyway, I must order. Can I get you around or what? Hey, hey, you with the suntan. I hope you're boned up on them West Indian calypsos. I've got a steel band, but well, Julian and the Joanna at least. Hello, oh, no, this pop's on the flipping blink again. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, waves off and all. Oh, it'll be that fuse in a cellar. Well, go and fix it then, mastermind. Well, it takes all the lights out and all, doesn't it? So? Well, it's dark, I could break my leg. Get the torch, stupid! Oh, if Jack doesn't fancy it, I'll have a crack. Hey, you know, you give all that skill work. He's right, you know, ladies. I mean, if he gets it wrong, the pumps could go backwards. And Bill will finish him up brewery. Oh, well, that's it then. I mean, if it takes danger, man. Makes me wonder what I pay you for. Oh. Sorry, folks, the ale's off. All right, all right, I'll get down there. Where are you going? Worry not, booze artists. Cometh the hour, cometh the man with the power and the knowledge. Super sparkle, soon have the ale flowing. What's the world coming to? Can he not fetch a young lady for a quiet lunchtime drink without finding chaos? Just a minute, Mr. Sugton. Don't give folk the wrong idea. I came in here to meet Emily. You just attached yourself. Right, get pulling the ale. Oh, you've well never time. fixed it. They don't call me Lightning Jack for an outright get bended in the elbow, bet you look. I am doing there's no joy. There's no ale either. Well, give it a chance to clear the air. Hooray! She hey, hey, oh. At least he's got some use. I reckon that he keeps his pub going. Good on you, Duck Egg. You're back on my honours list. The eagle has landed, eh? Bet your mother wasn't here to see it. Yeah, cock. I'll try two pennies for this. Usual tripe, I reckon, but it gets me off to bye bye's. How's your writing, anyway? Oh, well, I packed it in, really. Oh, I did say writing, you know. Oh, no, you said right. Have you uh, not packed other in then? The other? Sorry, I'm not with you. Oh, well, seeing you were so amused, perhaps you can enlighten me. Oh, I see. Oh, well, that's not very much on my mind at the moment. You're recharging a battery. Oh. oh, no, I mean, when the only offer you get is Percy Sugged and pester you to go to a dance at the over 60s, for heaven's sake. Well, if it's offers you're after, you should have tapped Jacko up this dinner. No, rampant Moody would have to fix in them pumps. Nobody was safe. I just thought that Jack Duckworth's favours were more than spoken for. If he his birthday, will it? Somebody should warn her. <laughs> is it? Well, if it isn't little Sir Galahad. Not wearing the knuckle dusters tonight? Trump. All right. Aye. Did, uh, did Jenny check in for the evening papers? Yes, why? Uh, I thought she might have given them a miss. You know, when girls start getting lad mad, oh, they start on. doing... Oh, Stop worrying. I can't see her running off with him. Well, I can, only too clearly. Don't change your mind about tonight, then. Still doing your ironing? Mm-hmm. Listen, uh, what is the position with Ben? I mean, do you think I'd be welcome down at the Rovers? Who knows? She plays a card very close to Lynch. Right, we're off now, Mrs. Serpent. Okay, my love. Come on, let's go, all guys, on our trail. Okay, don't you? Oh, hello, are you still here? Oh, hello, Mrs. Serpent. Oh, hello, I thought you'd be halfway to Sheffield by now. We're uh, just waiting for our lift. Who was on this all night pop do? Only there's a tricky looking fella out there with a zinky Morris Minor. Oh, that's us. Oh, try, Mrs. Ogden. We'll be back with the milk. I imagine you'll be waiting up for us. Oh, I'm sure that won't be necessary. At least Kevin knows right from wrong. Mrs. Oh, Ogden, what we want to do is our own thing. Come on, Kevin, let's grab the back seat for them. Hello. 
Oh, she's a little madam. Never washes a pot, you know. She's a cavorting little article, still, like I was saying. They don't seem bad kids. <sighs> the pump's all right, Betty. Oh, I keep your fingers crossed. Her Majesty phoned the brewery, you know, and played merry hell with them. And all they said was, we'll make a note of it. Oh, well, as long as we've got our resident genius. Jack, I don't think we'll see much of him tonight. I copped him on the phone talking to somebody called Dulce. He's a lad, isn't he? Mm. Nothing stops him for long. Well, Bill is going to have to watch it. I mean, the mood he's in, he won't think twice about packing his bags. <laughs> it's all down to cheek, isn't it? How do you mean, love? Well, look at me. I just can't push myself, can I? The more I like somebody, the shyer I get with them. Is it Alan Bradley? Beth's just said she saw him in the cabin chatting Rita up. I saw him there this morning. It's like he can't keep away. What makes it worse, since that stupid punch-up, he's not welcome here. You'd make him welcome, wouldn't you? Are you kidding? Does he know? Of course he does. Well, there you are, then. And if he does pop in here, it won't be any just for the beer, will it? Ah, the newlyweds. What'll you have, old creatures of bronze? I do have minions, but as you can see, they're too busy talking. <laughs> I'll have a scotch in the rocks and uh... a rum punch, please. <coughs> no, only kidding, Alpha Lager. Ah, heck, I was just going to say, if this carries on, first ball will be a fast bowler. <laughs> so, how did your day go? Oh, it's not bad. I've been busy to say the least. Well, the cool is a happy hour. Present company, I can understand why. Forgotten where you live or something. I told you I'd be a bit late when you phoned. It was almost an hour ago. I phoned again not ten minutes since. Nobody answered. Big deal. Send out search parties. I've left him to keep me mum's. He wants his tea. Well, you'll be getting it, won't he? Does that mean you're coming back with us then? Don't talk to him. Well, I'm beginning to wonder, Gail, the way you've been acting lately. And don't think I'll come chasing a second time. Suit yourself. What does that mean? It means I can do without threats. Threats? Now do me a favour. I've been the soul of patience. Oh, yeah. You're a real brick. Hey. Listen. I like the idea of Australia. I was keen. OK. It may not have suited you, but I'd have settled. If you think so. It's not been begetted, Gail. Even Ian said so. Ian said what? Ian said that I was the type. But you, you weren't. I don't believe that. It's gospel. I swear. But what difference does it make? We're not going. Australia, Ian, it's all history. How could he say that? It was just a remark. A remark, was it? Oh, I get the drift. Did it go uh, somewhat like this? Uh, you and him, uh, golden boys, fit for the sun and sand, where I'm more the clogs and shawl type, scuttling around in me curlers and wellies. It's a pity you lumbered with me, isn't it? You and him have made a great team. You should have taken him to Edinburgh with you. You, him, and Mark Playboy Siddle. Shopping around for your rotten sports cars and whatever else there might be in the window. So that's it. Edinburgh. You're gonna have to believe me, Gail. Nothing happened up there. I don't know how I can prove it, but nothing happened. If it had, do you think it would be worth all this misery? Gail, love. I wish I had a taken Ian. Maybe you'd have believed him. Oh, Brian. Brian, I'm sorry. You're right. Nothing happened. Let's go on.
Julian, don't knock him out. Rocky? Nobody wants to use us as a punch bag in here tonight, is there? No. Nope. Not unless somebody wants to use me as one. Serve the mango. Thanks, Bert. <coughs> Julian, come on! Don't know where. Slad can play this to our McCarthy better than all your can music. Brings back memories, doesn't it? Like you've been at war. Western Desert, Vera Lynn. I suppose I remind you of Vera Lynn. Actually, when I see you, I see Churchill. Find me, mister. No, Churchill tank. Oh, oh. Somebody put a penny in slots. I've not paid that penny in bill again. Where's me salamander? Oh, the ball. Can they appeal for Tom? Everybody stay where they're standing. Don't move. This is a police raid. Down. Down the tail blow. Shoot for the whites of their eyes. How clever. When the nights go on again. Everybody logged in the blackout. This afternoon is nobody's business. <laughs> a big hand, lads and lasses, for the man with the golden. Hey! Wayne Forry, screwdriver! Hey! Oh, 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 now behave! Oi, is this going to happen every time we pull a pint? Oh. Oh. Julian, do you want my customers to think you're a Jesse? Well, don't look about. It's it, Jules, baby. It's all right. Yeah, I think it's just a loose connection. I think there might be a job for me here for pricing. Oh, we'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again on some sunny day. Have you seen out your dad? Yeah, he's round the front vandalising your car. Come off it. I mean, you've been in Rovers. Has it scarved off? Scarved off? Scarved off? He's only the man of the moment, isn't he? Saved the help supply this dinner, now he's gone and done his stuff with the lights. How did he? Well, he went out, didn't he? Every last bulb. But the old fellow was there with his technical wizardry. He had to feel proud. By the left. Hey, I wish I'd have seen that. Yeah, it did great, me dad. Did us all credit. Especially after Mad Allen digging me and me making a prat of myself. Um, he's coming home tonight, then, is he, your dad? Well, I couldn't say, could I? I mean, he's not had uh, much of a welcome here recently, has he? Ah, oh, well, if he does decide to honour us. 
Tell him to do his burping down there. Keep his teeth in. And you never know, he might just get lucky. Here. Aren't you taking your handbag with your precious car keys? Oh, hey, yeah. Hey, I better add on to. Right, well. Night, love. Good night. Panic. Where were you at tea time? Oh, I think she'd forgotten all about that. Anyway, how's the rovers? The roof's not falling, has it? Well, if it had I done, I'd have fixed it. My man was dead impressed. They build a meal pit. Listen, you catch her before she drops off, and I reckon that you could have them car keys by tomorrow. Hey. Am I getting you right? I mean, I'd have a very full day, you know. Good night, Papa. Ball at my feet. Open goal. Not a kick left. No, Petal. Stick with Joe from the ship, yeah. Squire will just have his wicked way with you. And you'll end up dog tired every night. And running a clapped out old boozer. I never see it again till what? Half past five. What time is it now? 29 minutes left. <laughs> do you think she'd still be up? It'd be just like a one second. She didn't think so. She knew it was a late do. Mm. He said we had to wait until a Monday, didn't we? They had the wheels to bring us home. Yeah. Any road. Who cares? I care. Even if it is half five in the morning, I want the proper good night kiss. Oh, and I don't need one of them pecs you give me when she's watching her. <laughs> it's nothing to laugh at. You can go up the lads, you it's know. Me, no, not here. I can feel her breathing down the back of my neck. But it just so happens that I've got the keys to the yard. Hey, why don't we go there? Will you ever get tired, you? What have you, you mean? Well, I will if you want me to. You've got eight hours solid rock and rolling. All right, then. Give us that key and let's get back to Strange Ways. <laughs> oh, give us the key. <laughs> hey, you think everyone up? Get back to the... Hey, come on. Clean out. Oh, my God. I want to come to you. <laughs> Kevin! What's up? Fire! Kevin! You haven't got anything stupid! Bring the bellows up! Tell them I found the big key! Wait, come on! Get the bell! Get the bell! Get the bell! Get the bell! It's on fire! Get Tracy out! 
Is Bess still in there? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. God knows what it's like up there. Get up there, hello, Michael Bottom, you're all right. Oh, That's it, now, good Daddy. Good lad, he's up. Careful. What's it like, Kev? He's full of smoke. Oh, Put right. a window through with your elbow, then. Suck the smoke. I bet you any months she's been smoking in bed. No, that's it. It's a bit burned, hello. Here, hold it. Suck out your brick. Yeah, I'll smash it with that. Can you get in, son? Hang on. Kev, leave it a fire again, do you? I can see I went away at elbow, dressed where you were. <laughs> he would, wouldn't he? You would have been one in hospital. Yeah. He tried, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. He did, that good laugh. What's yeah. that with you? Trying to crack in your face. It's no funny about that. Oh, you'd laugh at earthquakes. Yeah, well, I don't know them, do I? Hey, they're all right. Nobody's hurt, thank God. What do you know? Oh, 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 there we go. Clear away, please. She's all yours, mate. Stay with her, mate. All right. She's all yours, mate. Couldn't you just hang on a bit, love? Give me time to get my face. 
That's where it started, down here in the uh, electrics. No doubt about it. Uh, yes. We have a funny time to start, though, isn't it? At half past five in the morning. Didn't start then. That's when it took hold. Could smold up for two or three hours or more. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. There'll be a few tongues hanging out tonight. Back up, it's okay. Uh, very right. kind of you, look. Oh, there we go. Hey, mm. uh, how is she? Oh, well, she's not so bad, well, Hilda, but she's coughing a lot, but then, I mean, she always did, done. didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, are there things? Who are you? Well, I'm Mrs Turpin. I worked there. Well, I did. Oh, yes, those are a thing, such as they are. Oh. Um, I'll take them. Uh, I'll bring them round, Betty. Oh, thanks, Robbie. I'll be wanting to work with you later on. Just a couple of questions. Oh, right. Well, everybody knows where I live, love. Right. Uh, I, uh, I work there and all at Mrs. Ogden, number 13. Right, Mrs. Ogden. Mr. Duckworth, I'd like a word with you. Right, right. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Hello, Becky. Yes. Hello, Graham. No, oh, mate, to my Cyril's, weren't you, Graham? Oh, I like to think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're look at Any the... chance of a little look in? I mean, I did work there. Oh, uh, aye, aye. All right, then, look. Yeah. Oh. Well, stand by the window, will you? I can't let you inside. The floor's a bit dicey. Really, yeah. I wouldn't want to fish you up out at the Oh, you <laughs> cheeky <laughs> devil. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh. Oh. Aye, that's what fire does. Oh. I reckon you were lucky, Mr. Barrow. <laughs> thanks very much. Nice cup of tea, that. Do you want another cup? I'll put kettle on. No, thanks. I'd better get on. So that's it. The lights went out and you changed the fuse. Put the right strength fuse in, did you? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm always careful about them things, yeah. And the pumps have been playing up? Yeah, but now to worry about them, to sort them out. So all in all, you're saying the electrics weren't all they might have been? Yeah, well, it, it was all property, you know. Aye. Uh, right, thanks again for the tea. Uh, Mrs Ogden, number 13, was it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll see myself out. You sure you fixed that fuse proper? Of course, I'm sure I'm not a fool. Stop picking on your dad. I'm not picking on him. They all do the picking, you know that lot. They're like ferrets down a rat's hole. Have you gone through all them this morning? There were 15 in there. I heard all the fire engines. They went past our flats. Mm. Yes, yeah, so did I, but I didn't realise it was so close. It must have been terribly exciting. Yeah, well, I can do without that sort of excitement. So can I. Emily, have you seen my dad? He's next door, love, in the cafe. Oh, thank goodness. Come on. Yeah, you go ahead, I'll catch up. Um, Mike, come on. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. oh, thank goodness. Is everything all right? Yes. Yes. I was so worried about you. Uh, well, right, that little trooper she was blew up fire to put it out, she did. <laughs> what I hear was a street full of heroes, thrown in the fire brigade with the flames licking through the windows. And they're saying that the ballers have a lot to do with it, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Uh, no. You're after heroes, you want Terry and Kevin. Well, they would have been if the firemen had left them. <laughs> Got a lung full of smoke, but apart from that, he's OK. He's stopping over at Elders. Well, I'll try and pop round and see him. Uh, but if you see him first, tell him to stop where he is. Yeah, OK. Cheers, mate. Sit down. All right, mate. 
Give us a couple of fancy cakes, Phyllis. Jim and Mum and Dad up. Oh, we did. Man of mystery, me, lad. Man of mystery. Hey, get his autograph, Phyllis, while you've got the chance. Eh? I was thinking of doing, but I've decided to give him a little kiss instead. Come here, you love. Hey, you're a good boy. Listen, what have I done for Pete's sake? All I did was catch me death a cold. You flaunted your body, and from what I hear, you did wonders for ladies well. at Coronation Street. <laughs> <laughs> right, cheers, mate. Sit down. Down. See ya. See ya. Oh, here's one of them. I hear you and your mate are up for the George Medal. Give it a rest, we didn't do out. Well. Not what I heard. Me neither. You were willing to have a go, that takes guts. Yeah, well, uh, I'll just go and see if anybody else wants fishing out the canal, shall I? Uh, cheers. Yeah, right. Okay, I've yes, got to get over there, Dad. Can I have a cup of tea, Rob, please? You see here, Dad, I'll open the office up. We just got a check for smoke down at that door, and then I'll be along. Yeah, well, just stay as long as you want. I'll get things started off. Okay, bye. See ya. Okay, love. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm all right. Listen, uh, try and give us some thought about what I said about packing up here. You're working far too well and there's no need. I'll think about it. You get off to work. Yeah. yeah see you. Hello. Hello. Hi. You all right? Yeah. Listen, uh, talk some sense into her, will you? Get it a pack up here. Leave it to your lovely mother and mother. Phyllis, can I have a cup of tea, please? And a chat with my daughter. You can, love. Come on, I'll clear this table. Oh. to do it. Yeah. Brian thinks you're working too hard. I know. There you are, then. I can go on thinking. No, I can't, though. I can't bear the way he looks at me. I've got to tell him about him. I'll have to. Oh, don't be so stupid. You'll do no such thing now. Just listen to me. Oh, Phyllis, thank you. Well, we saved my life. You're welcome. <laughs> Just listen to me. Now, Brian is absolutely sure in his own mind why you're acting the way you are. And it's got nothing to do with another bloke. So why make him miserable? I mean, you know what they say, where ignorance is bliss, it's folly to be by. Why do you think I've had such a happy life? Because I've been dead ignorant for most of it. You know, I mean, this... What Brian doesn't know can't hurt him. Just leave it. Leave it the way it is. Have you thought how much you did? If you did tell him, eh? Just keep your mouth shut and count your blessings. Look, I know how you're feeling now, but really, is it worth ruining two lives over somebody that you'll have forgotten in a couple of months? I won't. Mind. Well, all right, then six months, whatever. But you will forget him, honestly, lovey, you will. <laughs> Do you know, there are times I envy the Catholics. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're one of them, lots, you could ease your conscience by telling somebody else. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong in telling a lie if it keeps people happy, is there? I know that's not in the Bible, but honestly, is the truth worth more than your marriage? Eh? Now, come on, ask yourself that. Drink your tea before it gets cold. Let's get back to leading a sensible life, eh? Hard as it is. All I am saying is watch what you tell them. Don't go talking yourself into trouble like you usually do. They're not stupid, these fellas, you know. Stop picking on your dad. Can't you see status in? Ma'am, will you shut up? I'm doing this for his own good, right? You know what he's like. Get him in a corner, he'll tell him a load of lies that I could have six and see through. And you'll be in a damn sight worse state if you get up to them kind of tricks. Oh, look. Listen to him, love. He's right. Well, they can't blame me for that wiring. I mean, it's not been looked at since Adam were on. Nobody is blaming you, you fathead. Hey. But you start spilling in a load of rubbish, they'll begin to wonder, won't they? Just tell them the truth. Tell them that the wiring was up the spout. <laughs> Shall I tell them that I've put two after your fuse in, eh? You what? Did you? I don't know, I might have done. Yeah, well... Well, don't tell him that, for God's sake. Maybe it's our fault. Maybe we, we, we go on at him so often, he's wondered if he can ever do outright. Yeah. Well, you don't help, do you? Perhaps if I... Just... Just take it as it comes. Hey, Dad? Oh, don't worry, Chuck. You've got me on your side. Come and see Mum and 
Delegation from the Barmaid's Union. <coughs> oh. oh, are we interrupting your dinner, love? No, go on, you're Well, I'll only be a minute, but you see, I've had a call from the brewery. Now, I don't know what it's about, but they want me there at about two o'clock. I mean, I was wondering if there was anything you wanted to say, or if you want me to ask them any questions or anything. About your jobs, you mean? Fat jobs. I don't know, love. I'll ask, of course, but... I don't know how long I'll be, but... Uh, well, I thought if we all met at, at Gail's Cafe at about, say, half past five, it should be done by then. Well, then I'll be able to tell you what they say. Yeah, well, well he'll be there, won't you, Chuck? Yeah, half yeah, past five. Right, well, come on. Get on with your dinner, love. May I have a chip? Go on, then. Oi, Gloria. See ya. ta -da. Right, come on, you two. Or else we'll be having these cold. through my head all day and it's just dawned on me what it is. What? Remember when we spotted the fire and Percy something come running on? Yeah, what about it? Well, you know what you said to him? No, what? You said, Bet's up there, she sleeps at the front bedroom. Did I? Yeah. How did you know Bet slept at the front bedroom? Well, I don't know, someone must have told me. <laughs> Wait till I get you home. Oh, Bridget. Another cup of tea, please. Have a great on. I'll be at Mr. Ward and it always looks like Alcatraz. There you Thanks, are. Thanks, Louie. You're welcome. Well, what happened? Drink your tea, you're going to need it. Hey, you've been a good boy, have you, Nana? He's been a little treasure, haven't you? What have you been? It's a big treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. Uh, Brian's gone off Australia now. Good girl. Nice to see one of you's got some sense. Mind you, being Brian's mum, won't shoot him instead of you. That's what he said. Fired. Well, he seemed a very nice young fella. I mean, he was one of the Ridleys, you know, just straight onto the board. He said they'd had an emergency meeting. They'd been round to the Rovers and inspected it and... And it'd be cheaper to put it down. Well, that's it, isn't it? Kaput. Looks like it. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Oh, God. Mavis, woman of my dreams, how you fix for another paper lad? Or is it paper person? Oh, well, that's a full compliment, thank you. Uh, besides, aren't you just a little bit mature for the position? Not for me, is it? For this even more mature but deserving case, I know what's just lost his job. Well, mature in the sense that he shaves every day. Not talking about your dad, are you? Well, I'm certainly not talking about my mum. At least I don't think I am. Well, surely it won't be long before he's back at work. Depends how long it takes me to find himself somewhere, doesn't it? And on his form, I could be drawing me pension. There's naff all in here, isn't there? I don't know. It's going to be flat jackets and tin hats down at number nine again, with him under my mum's feet the whole time. It's bad for a child, you know. Well, I dare say he'll live through it. Anyway, it can only be a few more weeks before they renovate the Rovers. It might, but renovating's not what the brewery's got in mind, Mrs F. More like demolishing. Surely you're not serious. Bet he got word last night. It seems they don't consider it's worth spending any more money on. Oh, does Bert know this? Well, I expect so. I mean, news of that ilk, it travels fast, doesn't it? So if either of you two here have a job going that might suit a bloke with an A-level in uh, bone idleness, do let me know. Ta-ta. I'm quite sure he's very concerned for all he calls his dad. Well, they all must be concerned. I mean, Bet, Betty, Gloria. Yeah, she was just telling me. She's trying to hide it, but I can tell she's dead upset. I sympathise. But if it's true, the worst one is, is Bet, isn't yeah. it? Not only does she lose her job, but she loses her home as well. Yeah. Anyway, what's drag you back here? Why aren't you at school? Morning off, it's sports day. Oh. I don't suppose you fancy coming up town, dear. Try some gear on for a laugh. 
Actually, I could do something new for tomorrow night, but I won't bother. Communal dressing rooms are not my idea of heaven. I prefer to keep my wrinkles to myself. Why, what's tomorrow night? Ah, tomorrow night, Mavis and I have got a date with 75 assorted fellas, oh. haven't we? Mind you, 74 of them will have their wives with them, and the 75th's only 4 foot 10 and bold as a coot <laughs> still. What is it? It's the annual news agent's orgy. <laughs> I have to put in an appearance. You don't sound too keen. Well, it were all right going to them things when Len was alive. Now, nah, I shan't bother buying anything. My usual little number will do. Nobody will remember I wore it two years running. Book? Right. What sort of book? A sizzling bestseller. What else? <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be a, a cross between Len Dayton and Harold Robbins with a touch of Jackie Collins thrown in, you know. <laughs> oh, wait. We could write it together, couldn't we? Of course we could. You could be Harold, I could be Jackie. Jackie yeah. Hey, we could call it uh, Weatherfield Wives. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, do you hear that, Gail? Me and Phyllis are going to put our little bonsies together and write a little scorcher. <laughs> you fancy contributing a chapter or two, eh? No, thank you, Martin. Actually, I prefer it if you contributed a bit more effort to your work here. There's a couple there who've been waiting to be served for at least ten minutes. Two. Hello, Hello. Hello. Gail, I wonder if I could ask you a favour. Well, if it's Martin's autograph you're after, he's over there. Um, no, go on. What? Uh, well, I I'm on my way to the hospital to see Beck, and I thought I'd do my shopping first before they get busy. Only it weighs a ton. <laughs> I think I could possibly leave it here yeah. for an hour. I'd okay. save your bus fare, Mrs Bishop. She's not there. She's gone home. Gloria rang up the hospital this morning and they said... She can't have gone home, surely. Gone to Betty's, I expect. Hey, you know that milkshake he ordered? Make a double ice cream. Double? Ye gods. <laughs> you certainly see the steamy side of life in this place, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've certainly got a bestseller on my hands now, Is he really I? writing a novel? So he says. Well, I might as well have a cup of tea while I'm here. <laughs> Thanks to young Jenny, I've just been saved a journey. Just on my way to visit poor Bet. Yes, yeah, she's discharged herself, mm. hasn't she? Well, I hope she hasn't been too hasty. Didn't you write one once, Mavis? What? A steamy expose of the local scene. Oh. Did you? Is that right? Yeah, it was a, a fictional romantic yes. work, actually. I, I just loosely based some of the characters on people I knew. Hey, what was it called? Oh, I don't remember. You do. Well, it was... Song of a Scarlet Summer, actually. Song of what? Hey, he's looking for saucy bits. Maybe you'll pick up some tits for him tomorrow night. <laughs> What's on tomorrow? Oh, it's Rita's annual news agents do. She's invited me along as a guest. Oh, isn't that nice? Yes. Would you like to bother my diamond earrings, love? Well, that's very kind of you, Phyllis. Thank you, but I'm not sure that I'm going. Oh, why ever not? That's an evening you usually enjoy, if I remember right. But, uh, I've got other plans this year. Oh. Uh, could I have two cheese and tomato on whole meal to take out, please, Gail? You think that's so, being a redhead? How much does it come to? 411.7. We'll scrub the 0.7 bit. Just call it 400 quid. Do you think he'll swallow that? Ooh. I once did call bright red, you know, in about 17. Call me style the strawberry blonde. <laughs> my dad said I lots of never been in a traffic accident. I know. <laughs> if you call it 825 an hour, that's uh, 379.5. Call it 380. Sounds better than 400, any road. I'm only doing this to cheer myself up. Well, what do you suggest I do to cheer myself up? Have a manic. You want to get me playing in his beers? Well, I'll tell you what, Dad. Why don't you come in with us on this job that we're costing out? Doing what? Well, you'd be, um, executive in charge of redistribution of raw materials. Labouring. Well, there'll be a certain amount of shifting items from point A to point B. I do grab Labouring. Well, it's better than sitting here on your bum all day, innit? And besides, we could do with an extra man. Couldn't we, Phil? Could we? Well, of course we could. I mean, the quicker we get this job done, the more impressed the fella's gonna be, innit? Now, oh, do you want the job, or don't you? Yes, it does. Don't interfere, Vera. Thanks very much, lads, but, uh, leave me out. Well, you suit yourself, but don't ever accuse us of not lending support, all right? Come on, girl. What's up with you, eh? Uh, it'd have put a few quid in your pocket, at least. Apart from wanting to concentrate all my efforts into getting myself something in the licensing trade, I'm frightened to death of that flipping brewery. What happens if they think it's me that caused that fire, eh, by doing that fuse? Look. Now, listen it. Look, what can they do to you, eh? You were only acting under orders. If anybody's to blame, it's that Bet Lynch for being stupid enough to ask you to do it in the first place.
long. How are you? I was actually on my way to the hospital this morning when they told me that you... Oh, I'm smashing tar. Never felt better. Mind you, there's nothing like a sexy young houseman to put the roses back in a girl's cheeks. Should you be out? Put a sock in it, eh? It's bad enough, Betty, clucking over me. Now, don't you start. Betty? What are you doing here? You should be in bed. Do you know everybody wants me in bed? Betty, that houseman didn't. Oh, I've just said the same. Oh, dear, I'd ask you in for a cup of tea, but the accountant's coming at one. Well, she's coming with me. I was just on my way home to make some lunch anyway. <laughs> Blimey. Anybody would think I'd suddenly turn feeble. There's only a bit of smoke. Keep us drive on it. All the same. Don't go overdoing it, do you hear? Oh, fat chance for you lot betting every move. Mm. Bye. See you, love. Hiya, Bella, love. Heard you out. How are you feeling? Listen, uh, I just want to have a quick word with you about what we're going to say hey, to Not just it, now, Jack. It can wait. What? Yeah, right. So, um... See you soon, eh? It's the right mess, isn't it, Carl? Look, come in the house, have a cup of tea and a bite to eat. Then we'll both go in there and sort through that damage. Bet? <laughs> Maybe they'll change their minds. No chance. According to Betty, the guillotine's already been lowered. That should affect my knitting, shouldn't I? Well, you're welcome to stay with me for a bit. You know that, don't you? Tarcock. I don't want to work Betty's feelings. Signed. It's not the next few weeks that's my problem. It's the rest of my flitting life. They'll find you another place. I remember Billy Walker giving me my job here. He didn't have fanciest chances. Annie Walker was away at their journeys at the time. She went spare when she clapped eyes on me. Lowered the tone, but she kept me on. She recognised a damn good barmaid when she saw one. So many people. So many things have happened here over the years. Albert Tatlock's 80th birthday. Why should I suddenly think of that? But they're all there. Ina Sharples, Eldrin Stan, Emily and Ernest, Ken and Val, Elsie, and you. You and your Len. Yeah. Then were the days all right. <laughs> they were all good days. But let's face it, some of them were downright lousy, but it were all part of... Don't laugh at me, will you, kid? When I came here to the Rovers, it was the first time in my life I felt that I'd found a place where I finally belonged. Jobs came and went, fellas came and went. But at this old dump, I felt that I'd found somewhere I could hang on to. Not just a job, but a place where Bet Lynch finally amounted to summit. I suppose what it gave me with some self-respect. Bayek. I never thought when I landed up here as a green young barmaid, one day I'd end up as the boss. Now look at it. You're doing yourself no good here. There's nothing more you can do. Come on. Come with me to the shop. I've always been a loser, you see. So many times I've picked myself up and started all over again. I'm tired, Reet. I'm not a kid anymore. It gets harder and harder to paint that smile back on again. How long can I go on doing that? How do you do it, kid? With 
pain. Sometimes so frightened. Sometimes so lonely, you can't even be bothered to cry. But you go on. We both know about that, Beth. You go on. Yes, I know. Gloria told me. Rotten news for all of you, that. What are they going to do with it? Knock it down, flood the site, turn it into a rubbish dump. Anyway, what do I care? Whatever they do with it, it'll be now in it for me. Well, surely the brewery must be under an obligation to find you something else. Oh, yes, mate. They'll all be sat there in a meeting now, wondering what they can do for poor old Jack Dutworth. So why don't you try the graffiti club, see if they want anybody? Has that opened again? Mm. Oh, it's been going a bit. Man, it's more your drinking dive now, isn't it? Still, it's worth a chance. It's local. And if you see Alec Gilroy, don't mention my name. Be the fellow who runs it. Yeah, used to be my agent in my singing days. Not a friendship I'd care to renew. Still, you should get on well with him. I would get on well with Count Dracula if he'd get me another job down a bow. Charlo. Bye. Oh, ain't it a shame? Oh, it is. I've just come from bed now. I mean, that's why I'm back late. She's in a rotten state over it all. Oh, you seemed a bit down. Still, you've got tomorrow night to cheer you up, haven't you? Rita's got tickets for this big news agent's do. Oh. She's really looking forward to it. So are you. Well, no, I'm sorry, Rita. I, I can't actually go. You can't go? No. Oh, this is a fine time to spring it on I, I me. No, and I'm, I'm sorry to let you down like this at the last minute, but, well, I'm, I'm sure you'll find somebody else to take you to a lovely affair like that. What about you, Mr. Bradley? I'm sure well, you'd escort Cinderella to the ball. It, it's a lovely do, and there's, there's a big band. I mean, not one of them noisy discos, and a right jolly crowd oh, of people. Oh, belt up, Riley. Take the notice, Alan. This is some of the she contacts from this flaming budgie every once in a while. It's called the Unstoppable Twitters. Look, I don't mind stepping into the breach if it's going to help you out. It's not just because we've been put on the spot, is it? Well, let's say it's a spot I'm delighted to be put on. Hello, love. Oh, hello, Alan. Have a good day. Uh, good if you mean I've sorted out my tight straw at long last. Bad if you mean I've been inundated with job offers. Well, it's early days yet. Listen, Gloria, uh, if you're strapped for cash, I can lend you some to tide you over, you know. All you've got to do is ask. Oh, well, I really appreciate the offer, Alan. It's very sweet of you. But I'll manage, thanks. I'll just have to stay off the champagne and caviar for a bit, that's all. <laughs> Which is why I'm off now to get myself a can of beans for my tea. Do you know, I might even go mad and get one with little sausages in. Why don't you come and have tea with us? Oh, no, I was only joking, honest. I, I like baked beans. I wouldn't have caviar if you chucked it at me. You've gone all pink. I know you weren't hinting. Just that I told Jenny to get a roast chicken this morning. There's more than enough for three. Come on, we'll make a party of it. What, to celebrate my losing my job? No, to uh, toast something better coming along, because it will, you know. Well, what do you say? Did we throw another spot in the pot? Two. There's nothing like misery for giving a girl an appetite. Evening, Squire. Blimey, you're eager. Yeah, I just wondered if there was any little jobs you'd like to be done before you get busy. I like to make myself useful. Well, I'll tell you what. That hound of yours, can yeah. it do anything? It can do lots of things. Why? What do you mean? Well, I mean, can it sing, dance, play the piano accordion? If so, get out on the pavement with it and drag a few punters in. It's going to be a thin night tonight. It's always a thin night. That's why I come here. Me and Dougal likes a bit of peace and quiet. Uh, glad I'm making somebody happy. <laughs> oh, come on in, sir. Come right on in. It's a wise man who gets here before the rush starts. <laughs> What's your pleasure? Ha business first, then pleasure. That's my motto. Jack Duckworth, are you the gaffer? Hey, I hope you're not selling, pal, cos I'm not buying. Oh, well, I, I am, in a, in a manner of speaking. My services. Best barman, best cellarman, best all-round dog's body in the Northern Union. You can have Sammy here. By the way, what are you doing in here, Sammy, lad? Getting away from Sugden, for one. Yes, I can see the attraction, a classy little booze of this. A bit quiet. Oh, bum with the right lad behind the bar. By the way, who's uh, running it for you? Me. Oh, well, well the, the boss shouldn't be pulling the pie. He should be out here, fronting the show. Which is where you are dead lucky, because I have just decided to make a new career move. Oh, aye. Now, Rovers has gone up in smoke, you'll be out down, won't well, you? Best bit of news I've heard in months is that. Oh, <laughs> thanks very much, pal. I'll send you a card. If you want one of pop me clubs, you can come round and tap dance on the grave. Have a really good laugh. No, no, I meant about the pub shutting down. Look, I'll uh, tell you what I'll do with you, pal. You want a job, right? Right. You say you're pally with the punters from across the road. Pally? 
90% of them only went in there because of me. Right. You get them in here as members, and you've cracked your own little job creation scheme. You mean all I've got to do is bring a few mates in here, and you'll take me on? Well, not so much a few. More like, say, 50. 50? Well, call it 30. 30 new members and you're back in business. Is that a deal? Yeah. You've got a deal. I'll open the other bottle. Oh, she's a little madam, you know, that one. She could have at least done the washing up before she went dashing off to her mates. I said I'd do it. It's the least I can do. If I ever move myself again. Huh? It's been great, thanks. How are you feeling now? Well, if you mean I'm still depressed, no, I'm not. I'm a lot more cheerful than I was. Mainly thanks to you. I've done nothing. You've been a friend, Alan. A true friend. And it's not the first time. I really appreciate it. I just want you to know that. End of mush. Well, you'd do the same for me. Yes, I would. I think we both know what it's like struggling uphill on your Todd, don't we? Well, I know you've not had an easy time. Well, who has? The thing that puzzles me, though, is why you? Why not me? Well, you're a lovely girl, Gloria, and I don't mean just to look at, you know. I mean, you're uh, warm, caring, uh, feminine. How do you pay a woman a compliment these days without getting embarrassed? Don't be embarrassed. I'm enjoying it. What I'm really trying to say is, why are you still on your own? Why haven't you been snapped up years ago? Well, maybe I'm choosy. Well, I'm sure you are, but there must have been some likely candidates. There was Steve. For a few months, I thought I was in love. That didn't end because of the prison thing, you know. I knew before that it couldn't last. He was, um, too much of a kid. Well, uh, I'm certainly not a kid. That's what I like about you. Well, one of the things. Why have we never done this before? I've never lost my job before. Well, in that case, I'm glad you did. Alan, how do you get on with Rita? Rita? Fine, why? Well, she was very involved with Jenny. She was absolutely fantastic with Jenny. I mean, I don't know what we'd have done without her. Oh, I've got a lot of respect for Rita, yeah. She's a lovely lady, but... Uh... But... Well, that's all it is. A friendship. Between the three of us. Hi, Vera. Pickles is driving up. It's our visit, sir. Oh, hiya, Bert, love. How are you? Have you got out a drink? Well, on a day. Duh. Not for me, Tal. Couldn't stomach alcohol. I'm still a bit queasy. Mm. Anyway, I'm sorry, Clark, but I, I've got to dash, cos my drive instructor's waiting. That's posh, Vera. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I thought when I had that bit of luck, I thought, I'm going to have to pay for it in the end, they all still. What do you mean, you paid for it? Well, you're out of work, aren't you? So I'll have to pay for it. Not unless you found some other muggings to support, yeah? No. No. Right, I'll see you, can't. Hey, chin up. Hey, it's a right face or any bad luck. So what happens next? No oh, idea. Brewery wants to see me in the morning. Oh, that, that could be a bit of good news, couldn't it? Oh, I like what? They want me to launch the demolition by knocking the first brick out with a little gold-plated hammer. God bless this pub and all who drank in her. Well, no, no, no. But they must have some plans, else, else why attempt for you? To find out how the fire started. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, oh. that. Which brings me back to what I'm doing here in the first place. How did that fire start, Jack? I don't know. I weren't flipping there. Yeah, but there's no doubt it was in that fuse box that you mended, is there? Not necessarily. I mean, it could have been a million one things, couldn't it? It could have been the, the telly, the microwave, fucking. Oi! You get this straight for a kickoff. I was not smoking in bed. 
And those firemen stated categorically to me that that fire started in the cellar. You botched it, didn't you? But I got the lights to work. Yeah, but how? Oh, don't bother. I won't understand if you told me. All I know is that whatever you did, it was some sort of a cock-up. Well, you, you asked me to do it. I was under orders, weren't I? I'm a flipping cellar man, not an electrician. I know. But the fact remains, the brewery's going to ask me some awkward questions. What kind of answers are you going to give? I don't know. It depends what the questions are, doesn't it? But I know one thing. They'll be looking for somebody to carry the can. Oh, while well, I think of it, will you put um, cornflakes down on the list? Eh? I said we're out of cornflakes. Will you put them on the shopping list? Yeah, all right. Oh, I've not woke up proper yet. Well, I'm not surprised the time you got home last night. Daddy, I had all this last night. You're going to get it again this morning. It's not on, you know, love. Look, I don't mind you staying out late occasionally, as long as you tell me and I know where you are. I thought I'd you a favour. I thought you wanted me out the road. What are you on about? Well, it was dead obvious that you and Gloria wanted to be on your own, so I thought, Jenny, don't be a goose. Oh, girl. come on. Well, I don't want to spoil a nice romance for you, do I? Look, if you're trying to wind me up, it won't work. I like Gloria. She's a very nice girl and a good neighbour, and that's all. Yeah. I mean that. I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. And I'll tell you something else. It hasn't worked. What? This little diversionary dodge of yours. You're still going to get a telling off for being out late last night. There you are. Get that lot down, you. What's this? What's it look like, bait and egg? Go on, I've made it for you. Get it down, you. <laughs> Where's mine? I made you know. Only father. Well, that's very nice, that, isn't it? What are you after? Nothing. Just because I've made a breakfast for you. You haven't cooked me a egg and bacon breakfast since Adam was a lad. Oh, I get it. A condemned man eats an arty breakfast, eh? What are you on about? You don't know now, you kids, do you? That's what they used to do, you know, when, when they used to hang folk. Before they talked to them, they'd give them a good nosh-up. Why? Eh? Well, why did they do that? Well, it was... I shouldn't have to tell you this. You should have been taught this at school. Body now, slam ladies, isn't it? They always give you good meat on last day. Never mind all that, you. Do you think... I am for the eye jump, that's why you've cooked me this big breakfast. You think that when Bet Lynch gets down to that brewery, she's going to drop me in it, don't you? Well, she is. I am going to get blamed for that flaming fire. Look, if you vote about you, you won't let her drop you in it, will you? Because you'll get down to that brewery and you'll tell them straight. Tell them what? Tell them me that cuts the fuse up. Tell them that it was me that set the fire. That's why the rovers went up in flames. A lot of good that'll do me, innit? But you're only doing them a favour, weren't you? Aye. Should have known better. It's fatal to try to help folk. You just take advantage. Take a warning, my son. Let my mistakes be a lesson to you. Don't you be like me. Don't go around trying to help people. You look after number one, lad. Yeah, OK. Dad, uh... Yes, my son? If you're not going to eat that bacon and egg, can I have it? Yeah, chaff. Hey, what's she doing with him? Well, from here, it looks like she's having a cup of tea and dropping fag ash on our clean floor. No, you know what I mean. She never covers in here, does she? Well, she's got to go somewhere, hasn't she? She's got no pub bar to stand behind now. <laughs> Don't be so sharp, you. What's she doing with him? That's what I mean. She's up to someone to guess me. At a guess, I'd say she was trying to get some advice. You know where I am to blame, don't you? Employing an idiot like Jack Duckworth. To that, I plead guilty. I must want my head feeling for letting him anywhere near the rovers in the first place. So according to the brewery, the fire started in the fuse box, did it? Well, that's what they told me. The fuse box in the cellar. As soon as they said it, I thought, don't we? Yeah, but you've been having trouble with your electrics for a while now, haven't you? Oh, aye. If I'd been on to the brewery once, morning about me, pumps keep going off. I must have been on ten times. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Jack was to blame for the original trouble. All I'm saying is, he must have made a pig's ear of him in that fuse. Mm. Well, if you want my opinion, and it's only an educated guess, of course, Go on. well, he'll have put too heavy a fuse in, I think. That's a possibility. So, it is Jack's fault, then? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly, no. I mean, he's not an expert, is he? He just wanted to get your power on the best way he knew how. It wasn't his fault he didn't know enough. Aye. Uh, Jack was doing his best, I suppose. Trouble is, his best isn't much good. And that's my fault, because I know that. 
And then again, when it comes down to A lad's A, it were my name over that front door, weren't it? You know, I shall really miss the Rovers. Yeah, so will a lot of people round here. I mean, you've only been going for how long now? Oh, three years. Yeah, well, there's people round here been going there 40 years or more. Be like having a leg up to them. Just think if Mr Tatlock had lived to see it. God, it would have killed him. <laughs> It's a bit Chinese, that, isn't it? Well, you know what I mean. And Stan Ogden, I mean, he spent more time in the Rovers than he did at home. Aye, life won't be the same round here with the Rovers shut down. Well, in my opinion, Norman, you were starting to spend rather too much time in there. I should hate you to develop into a heavy drinker. Oh, you know me, Mrs Bishop. Moderation in all things. Mr Moderation, me. Yes, I, I know that, Norman, but all the same, well... I have strong opinions about young people and drink. Oh, well, you've got to meet your friends somewhere, and what's the alternative? And anyway, I didn't go in there just to meet me friends. You met, you met a whole cross-section of the community. You got a lot of intellectual fertilisation. Oh, that's true. I've heard a lot of fertiliser talked <laughs> in there over the years. There you are, Arthur. 180 for cash. Hey, right, lads, come on, stick with me. You won't go far wrong. Here we are, Alec. Two new members for you. A good pint pulled by a fellow who knows his beer. Man, is this the place? Listen, don't judge a book by its cover, my son. This is a first-class watering hole. Yeah, I'll fill them in, will you? Hey. Have they paid? I was forgetting. They are two new members. This place will be a little gold mine with me helping. Bit of a dump, innit? You're not wrong, Sonny. I can't blimey, Dad. A fiver just to join this hole. Look, it'll grow on your lads. Believe me. I mean, great atmosphere, first-class clientele. And what's more, it's handy. Oh, yeah, it's handy, all right. It's about all you can say for it. What's the beer like? Oh, hey, one now. You know me. Hard to please, sir. Two pints, please, Alec, for the lads, will you? Right, right. right you go and sit down, eh? about it being a great place to drink. No, no. He's telling me you got a load of models drinking in here at dinner time. Models in here? <laughs> You've conned us, mate. I want my money back. Oh, come on. I can't. I've mean, your membership for you. I've just handed you tin, haven't I? Right, right, lads, come on. Get it down. Yeah, this is my treat. That pint's cost me a fiver. Yeah. Oh, now, be fair, fellas. How far does a fiver go these days, eh? And for your money, you've got access to a right nice little drinking place. You could bring a bird if you if you wanted to show off and all, you know, a bit of sophistication. You must be joking, in here. Look, you stop moaning. If you had a social conscience, you'd be glad to join. Glad, because it's just like I told you. If I can get another 28 members to join this place, Alec has promised me a job behind the bar. Now, come on, lads. Be fair. I need it, don't I? You'll never get 30 mugs to come and drink in this dump. I don't know. It's got us. Oh, come on. Don't be miserable. And another thing is, after time, no worrying about getting choked out, is there? And you need a place now. The Rovers is gone. Yeah, well, there is that. Look, I'm starving anyway. I want something to eat. What do they do here? Uh, food. You don't need food. It's fattening, isn't it? <laughs> food. Got a minute. Hey, 164 for them two pounds. Don't fret, Ali. They're talking about food. I knew they were in trouble as soon as they come in here. As soon as you walk through that door with them, I said to myself, hello, I said. These aren't what I call club drinkers. Oh, they are, Alec. Honest, honest. I'm sorry, lads. We're not catering today. The uh, the microwave's on the blink, you see. Right, that's it. Come on, mate. Uh, mind you, I dare say I could do you a sandwich. What have you got? Uh, cheese, I dare say. Or corned beef. I'll have a corned beef. Make that too. Right. Here, I've got a mission for you. Oh, all right. Just dip across to the corner shop down Coronation Street and get me two corned beef bar cakes. Oh, Alf Roberts' place, you mean? Right, Tom. Stay, Dougal. There's big money in this club, you know. That's where the profit is these days. Mind you, I don't have to tell you, Ali. You're going to be wanting me behind this bar, you know. But with increased membership and all the grub. I'll tell you what I do want. 164 for them two pounds. Can't you take it out with the membership fee? Not to the membership fee. The big drinkers, then, lads, I'm telling you. The big drinkers. And I'm going to get you some more. That's where I'm going now, to drum some more up for you. See you. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello. Listen, I won't be a minute finding a magazine. I'll have to have something to read while I'm waiting for you. Take all the time you want, Chuck. I'm in no great hurry to keep this appointment with fear, I can tell you. Pack of fags, please, ma'am. Mm. How are you now, Bet? No after effects after all that smoke. Oh, I'm okay, Ta. I've got my lungs used to smoke over a long period of years. I'm back to the self-inflicted now. Well, you were very lucky, Bet. Me? Lucky? How do you make that out? Well, you could have been killed, couldn't you? Oh, I didn't get killed, did I? I don't see how that makes me lucky, seeing as I lost my pub. 
Well, all I meant was... And now I'm off to the brewery to find out what else I've lost. Like me job, me future, me home. But Newton are really have other pubs, Bet. They'll find you another one. Oh, do you reckon? They already put me in charge of one. I let the damn thing burn down. But it wasn't your fault. Mavis, it was my name over that front door. And what happens inside is all down to me. And let's face it, I'm not exactly going to be flavour of the month with George Newton, am I? Come on, Glow. No good putting off the evil moment any longer. See ya. Carla. Thanks. Thanks, Carla. <laughs> Dead old, isn't it? Yeah, and where's our flaming sandwiches? He's taking his time with them, isn't he? You reckon he's baking the bread or what? Tactics, isn't it? Keep you waiting till you sup up and order another pint. We have another one, or what? Ah, it's well with the buses. Let's go and have one in the flying arts. Yeah, that's what? Freshly made. I'll have them, I suppose. And, uh, give us another couple of pints, then. Uh, right, that'll be two pounds for your sandwiches. You yeah, what? A quid a piece for a corned beef barm cake? Well, my old Robert, you know the corner shop in Coronation Street? He does corned beef barm cakes for 50 pence each. Ah, I dare say he does, but he hasn't got my overheads, has he? <laughs> then again, you see, you've got to keep your prices up a bit in a place like this. Otherwise, only get the riffraff thrown in. Yeah, well, you're uh, certainly managing to avoid that, aren't you? Uh, it's ever such thirsty work running for balm cakes. All right, you're on a half. Tom, don't be afraid to ask, though. I like the exercise. And I don't mind getting thirsty. I'll tell you what, mate, I was ready for this, I was starving. Mm, me and all. I'll say this. They're better than Alf Roberts palm cakes. Yeah. Hey, women's jobs, eh? Fleming short on typists, executive secretaries. Hang on, what's this? To take charge of Salesforce. Flaming computers? What's happened to all the flipping proper jobs? Gonna let me in? Eh? Yeah, yeah, come in. I used to have a public house, you know. All and sundry used to come marching through my front door. Nobody ever bothered to wipe their feet. Yeah, come through, look. Find yourself a seat. Ah, I will. I think you'd better sit down and all. Oh, flaming hell, it's like that, is it? They're gonna pin it all on me, are they, Newton and Ridley, eh? I wasn't an electrician, I was all just right, a All right, all right, don't get your underpants in a tangle. Now, you want the good news first? The good news? Yeah, 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 right. Right. They're not blaming you for the fire? They're not? Because I stuck up for you, didn't I? I said there's no good blaming duck egg. You might as well blame two short planks. Oh, thanks very much. Nah, I'm only kidding you. They're not trying to blame anybody. Not you, not me. They know that the Rovers should have had a big rewiring job way back. George Newton said so himself. So there you are. There's the good news. What's the bad news? There isn't any. In fact, there's some more good news. They're going to do it all up, Jack. Top to bottom. A whole new look. In fact, I think George Newton was quite pleased we had the fire. Yeah, that's great. Hey, didn't, what about you? You know, when they do it up, are you, you're still going to be in charge, eh? You bet your boots, sunshine. What about me? What about you? You know, you know about my job. I mean, all right. Well, Jacko, there's some licensees who are very, very hard. If they'd have the pub all nicely done up, they wouldn't want something like you standing behind the bar, making the premises look shabby. But you see, I'm not like that. Call me sentimental if you want. Put me a job there for you. Great. You, Betty, Gloria, same old firm. Great. Is that all you can keep saying, great? I thought you'd at least offer me a drink to celebrate. Well, I would. There's no in the house, not a drop. <sighs> Do you know what I really feel like doing now? Going round to my rovers for a celebration drink. Yeah, we can't though, can we? Still, there's other ways of celebrating for a man and a woman. I'll pretend I never heard that, Duckworth. 
Hey, Dad. Yeah? What time are we going to get back from this rave-up? You can hardly call a dinner dance for news agents a rave-up, love. Well, I don't know. What about them pastries they're handing out every day? It's bound to have some effect. Well, I'll let you know. What time are we getting back? About midnight, I think. Hey, so you'd better be here, right? All right. I'm not going out anyway. I would have an early night. Well, that makes a change. Now, what did I put the bow tie? Where did... Oh. Hello, Jen. Thanks. Um, is your dad in? Yeah, he's just getting changed. Oh, I I've just had some good news today, and I just thought I'd pop in and, and see. Oh, if... Hello, love. Hi, Alan. Did you say something about good news? Yeah, yeah. They're doing the Rovers up, uh, reopening it, you know, so I'm getting my job back. Oh, well, that's great. I'm really pleased to hear that. Oh, thanks. I've, uh, I've just been to the off-license, bought a bottle of wine. Thought you might help me celebrate, but, well, oh, I, I can see you. I would have loved to. But I'm going out, you see. Yeah. Oh, no, it's all right. I can see you going yeah. out. Uh, is it some sort of an office do? No, no, it's, it's the news agents have this annual do at the town hall, you know. It's, uh, I'm Rita's guest for the evening, you know. Oh. Oh, well, I won't keep you then. Yeah, well, listen, I'm pleased to hear your job's still there. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, bye now. You've upset her now. What do you mean, I've upset her? Well, you know she fancies you. Give up, will you? If the Rovers is going to be opening up again, Jack, it hardly seems worth me joining the graffiti club. That's right. But hang, hang on. It could be months before the Rovers opens up again. Well, there you are then. Think of all the money I'll save by not drinking. Good point, love. Oh, it's a waste of time talking to trying to talk sense to women. They are something about you'll join, won't you? Oh, no, no. I'm too young to win places like that. Oh. Evening. Have a cup of coffee, please. Well, I'll get that. Just the lad I want to see. Have you seen out of our terror this evening? Uh, not since we knocked off work, no. No, you won't do, will you, neither? You've been out of that graffiti club, you know, with that young Kevin. Oh, he's joined, has he? Well, he never said anything to me. Oh, well, he won't do, will he? He's always been a bit selfish like that, our Terry. Always kept the best things to himself. Well, I know he was moaning about the ale in the flying horse. Rubbish and all. Birds are not the same, neither. I don't know, it's Newton and Ridley's at the graffiti club. Birds? What birds? Look at that, I've said too much as it is. But I can get you membership, special price to you, fiver. Oh, yeah, I mean, I might as well. I mean, I like a decent pint. Of course you do, son. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> of course you do. <laughs> you! Mavis? Only me? Me such a turn. I, I heard this voice. Well, you recognise it, didn't you? Yes, of course I did. Well, you knew it was me then. Yes, I know, but once I'd locked up in the cabin and gone upstairs to the flat, and then somebody suddenly shouts. Oh, well, if I go on, you're going to say I'm one of those nervous old maids. Well, I'm sorry I made you jump. But I wanted a word with you, you see. Anyway, what, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be on your way to the town hall? Well, that's what I'm trying to explain oh. to you. And incidentally, I phoned Alan and told him I was coming here, so he's going to pick me up here. Oh. No, what I wanted to see you about, I know it's my turn to do papers in the morning, but we're bound to be at this due till midnight at oh, least, all so... All right, I'll do the papers in the morning. Oh, if you would, thank you. <laughs> then I'll do them two days on the trot makeup for you. <laughs> it's all right, Rita. I mean, the whole point of you going out tonight is that you don't have to worry about tomorrow's papers mm. and things. I just want you to have a really good time. Well, I shall do my best, maybe, because I know you'll only shout at me if I don't. <laughs> anyway, it's you that set me up on this date. Honestly, you were like a school kid. You couldn't have been more obvious than if you'd shouted across the road, Hey, lad, my mate fancies you. Oh, it wasn't as bad as that. Anyway, you do fancy him, and I'm quite sure he fancies you. Well, you're a lot surer than I am, though. That'll be him. Hello, Hello, love. You asked me to pick her up here, yeah. sorry. Oh. Hello, love. There you are. You all set? Yes, are you? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Good. Hey, you look terrific. Thank you. Well, have a good time. Right, well, uh, come on. Don't worry, I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't get back till dinner time tomorrow. Just enjoy yourself. Bye. Bye. Tonight on ITV in World Cup. Well, so how long will it be the Port Rovers opens up again? I don't know, do I? We have to do some out. Because I'm not keeping you. I am doing some. I'm flogging myself to death trying to get members for Alec Gilroy's club so they'll give me a job behind the bar. How many have you got? Good few, don't you worry. How many? Four. With you, five. Talking out five hard earned quid so you can go splash it up against wall. You want it to get me a job and you couldn't have a better cause. And I'm expecting you to sign a few girls up from work and all. You're not fine, mate. Me doing your dirty work for you. You mean dirty work? They've got a drink somewhere, haven't they? 
And another thing, did Bet Lynch definitely say she was going to set you on after Rovers opens up again? Oh, yes, I've told you. Yeah. Well, you haven't got it on paper, have you? She's dead fast, that one. If you ask me, you want to forget about the flaming Rovers and the flaming graffiti club and get yourself a proper job. Yeah, well, I'm not asking you, am I? Well, you keep asking me for five quid. Are you going to pay me your membership money or are you not? I mean, heckers like. Look, I need that money for my driving lesson. And I keep telling you I don't like the graffiti club. You'll not catch me going in that place. Good. That means there is one place I can go where I'm not going to have you on my back moaning and groaning. And that's where I'm going. Right now. Oh, for giving me a smashing night out. Huh. It should be me that's thanking you. I really enjoyed myself. Good. So did I. Well, we ought to do this sort of thing more often. Yeah. I'm all for that. Uh, I'd love a cup of coffee, if you feel like inviting me in. What time is it? Ten to one. You've got Jenny waiting at home for you, Alan. She's getting a bit late. OK. I think I'd better be saying good night. Yeah. There'll be other nights, Alan. Yeah? Good night, Reed. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Alec. You come round here and stand where I am, and I'll come round there and, and pull your pints, eh? Hey, look, I'm closing up now, Jack. That, that, that's the beauty of a club, isn't it? You are not at the mercy of pub hours. Look, huh? it is one o'clock, you know, and the amount I'm making on that pound you're something won't pay the electric light. Hey, you wait till you get me on me behind that bar with you, mate, eh? Hey? Because I've got a following, you know. A following. How do you mean, a following? Is uh, somebody after you? <laughs> 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 what have you been up to, eh? No, no. <laughs> no, I'm following. Like, like, like fans. They're coming from me, sparkling banter. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sup up, Jack, and then I can lock up. OK, I'm, I'm telling you, Alec, when you've got me on that side of the bar there, I'll double your takings for ah, you. Well, you just get me them members you promised and then we'll see about it. Don't worry me, I'll drum them up for you. Hey, and that reminds me. Just watch who you sign up and all. I had a very odd lad in here this evening, very early on. Wild sort of area. had a bit of a mad look about him. Glasses. Don't know anybody like that. Well, he said he knew you. Kept rambling on about birds. Why would that be? I don't know. The bird mad some fellas, aren't they? Hello. You're up late. Oh, I'm a night owl, me. Always have been. I was just looking through my window, saw you parking your car. I wondered if you felt like having a drink. What now? Still haven't celebrated my good news yet. I'm just going to open that bottle of wine I bought. Thought you might help me drink it. Well, that's a very attractive proposition, is that? So, uh, yes, please. Good. Be up yet. Well, I haven't been for long. I just wanted to see you and uh, ask you if you've got any uh, regrets about last night. No. Good. Though I might have, if it turned out to be the first time and the last. I think I'd regret that and all. Good. Right, well, uh, well, I'll see you later on. Well, I shan't be going anywhere. 
Oh, uh, I think it's best if uh, Jenny doesn't find out that we're seeing each other. Just for now, it's, it's just that I, I don't know how she'd react, you know. Yeah. Oh. Dear Mev. Thank you. Did you have a good time then last night? Yes, it was very nice. He's a good dancer, my dad. He is. Well, as good as he could be with me as a partner. I bet you were very good. You made the perfect couple. Oh, would you really think there's any such thing? Yes, I do. Anyway, there are a couple of dirty stopouts. I heard him sneaking in on three this morning. Three? I looked at the clock. Then you want a new one. We'll be back before one o'clock. That's your story, is it? That's the truth. Ooh. Well, one o'clock, three o'clock, it all sounds very late to me. We had a very pleasant evening. He drove me home, dropped me off, and that was the end of it. And if you don't believe me, I'll stick that bag over your head. You see him again? Oh. Well, didn't you make any plans? I mean, when he left you at... Whatever time it was, didn't either of you suggest going out again? What is all this? Oh, well, I know you, Rita. And I know the impression you'll have given. Go on. Well, you won't like me saying this, but you do tend to be, well, reserved, and that can be very off-putting. Can it? Yes, it can. I mean, but sometimes you have to be bold and not frightened to make the first move. Have you got this off D.H. Lawrence, back of a matchbox, or what? All I'm saying is you might not wish to show your feelings to me or to Jenny. Because I'm reserved. But if you hide them from Alan as well, he'll never know, will he? Hey, up, pal. How do? Your lucky day today. Not so far, it's in. I've only got half my bread order. And one of my display cabinets was packed up. Nay. Aye. I've had a whole load of... Process meat to chuck out. Oh, that's a tragedy, that is. Here, cheer yourself up. Fill one of these and be, join the elite. Graffiti club? Ah, nice part of the north, you know. You nobody till you've been seen in here, and it's only five quid for a 12-month membership. Five quid? That life membership, life membership, that is. Hey, hey, Percy, this will suit you, lad. What is it? I haven't got my reading glasses. It's a club for officers and gentlemen. Ah, graffiti club down in the street. That mucky old. I wouldn't say put in there, we're dying of thirst. Ah, well, he wants five quid for privilege. Yeah, well, you can leave the money and pay that as and when. Listen, you want to come and have a deco, savour the atmosphere. You might be pleasantly surprised. I'd be pleasantly surprised to get out of there again without having my pockets picked. First drinks on the house? Only usually I want. Well, you've cracked it then, haven't you? I'll consider it. <laughs> hey, what's in it for you that makes you so keen to drag folk in anyway? Well, it's a community spirit, isn't it, Alf? I mean, it would be nice if we could all stick together, you know, now the Rovers is kind of gone for a while. And... See ya. Hi. Uh, oh, is that you, Kevin? Yeah, I've uh, just come over for some money. Oh. Left in me other jacket. Nothing wrong, is there? Didn't expect to see you here. Eh? No, well, it's what's wrong at the Rovers, what's keeping me in. Not much me and my long mop can be doing there for a bit. Oh, I. Still, I'm glad I've caught you as it happens. There, um, wasn't anything the matter with Sally last night, was there? No. No? Only I thought I had to come downstairs. Well, I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'll speak plain, seeing as it's the only way I know. She wasn't by any chance coming down to see you, was she? No. Hmm. Well, I hope not, because you know my standards, Kevin. And you know I expect you both to abide by them while you're under this roof. Yeah. Well, and that's all I wanted to say. Right, then. I don't want us to fall out about it, and, well, there's no reason why we should. As long as you both understand, I'm having no carryings on in this house. Yeah, we understand. Right, then. Right, we'll have to rush. See you later. Da da -lo. Have you done? Yeah, all right. Hey, you're talking to an old admirer of yours the other day. Admirer of mine? Give it a clue. Carries your dog in a shopping bag. Oh, Sam Tyndall. There's not much to choose between him and dog. Pair of them a little bit, please. Do you want to know where I saw him? Where? Graffiti Club. Oh, thanks for telling me. Do you want to join? Do I, Eckers like? I want to avoid it. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, can you do me something to take back to the garage? Uh, he's caught in his usual. Yeah, of course I can. Can I have a meat pie, chips and a cup of tea, please? Martin will bring it over. <laughs> Gail, uh, do you fancy going out tonight? Um... Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I think we should. Yeah, I called back at the house this morning. So? So? Hilda only heard you coming downstairs last night, didn't she? No. Yes. She couldn't have done. I was as quiet as a mouse. Yeah, well, she did. <laughs> so what did she say? 
Well, she asked me if you coming down to see me. What did you say? I said no. What, and she believed you? I don't know. Still has her doubts. You've got to be more careful in mm. future. Kevin, I'm fed up of being flipping careful. Tiptoeing about in the middle of the night, waiting to be caught, waiting to be told off. She has us acting like a couple of kids. Yeah, well, it is her house. Mm, don't you start saying it. It's all we have from her. Well, it is. And an attitude ain't gonna change if we stop there for years. We're not gonna stop there for years, cos I don't want to stop there another night. Oh, so where are you gonna go? Well, there must be other flats and that other fort find, and why can't we? Because we haven't been looking, have we? Then it's time we started. I'm gonna get a paper and have a look this afternoon. Right. You should be... Oh, cheers. Thanks very much. Well, uh. Don't say anything to her until we find somewhere for definite. No. Do you want to protect it just in case? You I, don't, know? I don't want it. How will happen? You happen, you might. You know, somewhere to take my wife. I'd it? expect it to leave me if I did. I'll see you. See you later. Yeah. How much is it to join this club, Jake? Now, normally a fiver. Yeah. But if you go along and mention my name, they uh, won't bother you for it. Oh, Why do you want to join? Yeah. Well, what's it like? What? It's dead grotty. Is it? Look, it's under new management. They've got big plans. Ah, mm. plans to take your money off you. <laughs> you. Never mind her. You come along and see yourself. Oh, there right. you are. Cheers, thanks very much. There you are. Fill it all in. Oh. M, lay low. Yes? Where are you doing your drinking now the rose is closed? <laughs> well, nowhere in particular. Well, I don't suppose you'd be interested. No, I don't suppose you would. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. What I don't understand, Terry, is why people all over Britain pay good money to hang around in dives like this. Yeah, well, it's uh, one of our national characteristics, isn't it? Yeah, but why? I mean, they'd be a lot more comfortable at home, wouldn't they? So why do it? Yeah, well, I know why I do it. Yeah? Well, if I stopped at home, I'd never see my mum and dad, would I? Coming into places like this, <laughs> I'd never get away from them. <laughs> Where are our chart what's at early hours at now, eh? Oh, rather well, than me. When do you think anybody was reduced to me last? I don't know, and it was dead posh when it first opened. One said, two familiar faces, anyway. Hi, <laughs> ma'am. Hiya. Your car's all tucked up. Safe from vandals, low-flying birds, and me dad. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> hard, Joe. I'll buy another drink when you finish that one. No, you're all right. <laughs> hey, um, I've rented a garage, you know, by Street. I should have gone. It's bound to be more salubrious in this place. <laughs> Now, I'm sure I'd have noticed two lovely ladies like you if you've been in before. No, we haven't. Uh, yeah. No, well, uh, could you just stick a name and address on there, then? Hey? Yeah. Hey, come here. Oh, you like, apart from Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck, we've had them join already. Oh, well, we're not paying notes. No, there's no need, it's not just now. No, we were recommended by Mr Jack Duckworth. <laughs> Aye, well, I shouldn't worry, love, I'll still serve you. What's that supposed to be? Well, the trouble with Jack Duckworth, love, He's good company for half an hour. Happen even an hour. After that, I just wish he'd find himself home to go to. He has got a home to go to, as a matter of fact. She lives in it. Yeah. Eh? I'm his wife. Oh. Isn't he the lucky one? Hello, Alan. Hello, Alan. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for last night. Had a smashing time. Oh, it's me that should be thanking you. Well, don't let's fall out about it, as long as we both enjoyed it. Well, I most certainly did. And I'm sorry I didn't invite you in. Oh. I was just feeling tired, that's all. It's nothing to feel sorry about. Well, let's not fall out over that either. So, let me make up for it. Come round tonight for a bite to eat. There's no need, Regent. No, I know there's no need. Will you? Uh, yes, yes, uh, that would be nice. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh, I'm sorry. Why, what have you done? Uh, well, I mean, don't let me interrupt. Uh, just pretend I'm not here. You didn't see Mavis just then, did you? No. no. Neither did I. About eight, then. Uh, I've got one or two things to check up on first. Can I, uh, can I give you a ring later on? Yeah, sure, I'll be here all afternoon. Uh, I'll do that. Bye now. Bye. Did you hear all that, then? No, I wasn't listening. Well, you should have been. Because I have been unreserved, reckless even. I've invited him round for a meal this evening. Oh, I am glad. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure he is. He's going to give me a ring this afternoon. Well, he probably got arrangements to make with Jenny or... Well, I don't know. It could be anything. Oh, he mustn't be so easily disheartened. Right? No. No, I mustn't, must I? <laughs> You know. Graffiti? Help yourself to sugar. Oh, Tarla. Yes, I was in the cloakroom. Mind you, it was quite exclusive in them days. Some of the types you see going in there now, they wouldn't have any coats worth hanging. Oh, well, this new fella, he's trying to stop all that, you see. Hey, be honest, might be a little job in it for me if I couldn't drum up enough members, like. 
Oh, well, I won't be much use to you. I mean, I hardly get out at all of an evening. What with having to keep an eye on things here. Well, what's going on? Nothing's going on. I'm making sure it isn't. Oh, young Kevin and his murder. Yes, well, it's a big responsibility having young people under your roof. There's some might shirk it, but not me. Give over, Hilda. You can't stop nature, love. I'm not talking about nature. Extraordinary marital relationships is what I'm talking about. You can't stop them, no way. Oh, I am doing whether I can or not. You might think you are, yeah. Well, you take my word. Kids today, that's all they ever think about. Not the thinking I'm trying to stop. No, but it's the thinking that leads to the doing. I bet they're racing up and down them stairs the minute your head hits that pillar. I don't know how you can sound so sure about it. Well, I've got a lot of my own, haven't I? Yes, well, and a little so more supervision there might have saved a few no, tears. Oh, love, there's no I could have done to stop that. They'd riddled past iron bars and through keels at that age, wouldn't they? And them two are what? No more than ten yards apart of a night. You're going to have to mind that staircase to stop them. Hmm. Yes, well, perhaps I will mind it then. I was wondering about tonight. I was wondering about that. Would you uh, welcome some company? As long as it's you. Oh, it'll be me, all right. Well, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to go out somewhere or do something? Whatever. Well, should we just see how the mood takes us, eh? <laughs> and I'll get a bottle of wine in case it doesn't take us very far. That sounds good. Right, well, I'll see you later on then. I'm not sure what time. I've got to see how I'm fixed with Jenny and uh, one or two other things. Oh, had you made other arrangements? No, no, no. Well, nothing I can't get out of anyway. Well, these things happen. Look, I haven't as much as peeled as Pud, so don't worry on that score. Yes, another time would be nice. No, don't apologise. It's not necessary. Honest. Bye. Well, I'll call round if you're to lose oh, any. yes, I will. It'll be nice to hear each other's news. I'm not sure I have any. Oh, I might have. Oh. I'll see you later, uh, then. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Bye. What is it they say about the best laid plans of mice and women? Why? He can't come. He's got some paperwork he's got to do all of a sudden. Oh, dear. Now I know why I prefer being reserved. Saves you the bother of being let down. Oh, Come on, Rita, what does he say exactly? I just told you. He's got some work he's got to finish tonight. At home? I imagine so. Well, then go around and see him when it's oh. finished. Well, why not? I mean, you're not saying you don't believe him. You're not saying it's just an excuse. No. Well, then, you just go around invite him out for a drink. I mean, you wouldn't mind if he called on you, would you? So why shouldn't you call on him? Because... Oh, I don't know. Because he's a man and you're a woman. And you think that he should do all the running. Well, times have changed, Rita. Things aren't like that anymore. Times might have changed. Doesn't mean that I have. Well, you have, as a matter of fact. You haven't once referred to Len in all this. You haven't once said that you can't go because of Len. Well, I think that's a big change. And one for the better. Doesn't mean I haven't thought about him. No, but... Well, you're not using him as an excuse. No, I don't suppose I am. So you'll go? Oh, Alan will be delighted to see you. I know he will. I'll think about it. Hiya. Hiya, Kev. Mm. Oh, that's good. I was beginning to wonder where you'd got to. Tea will be ready in about five minutes. No, I was hoping I could have a bath first. Oh, yeah, well, go on then. Plenty of hot water. I'll be quick. Hey, do you want me to come and scrub your back for you? I think you could make yourself more useful by setting the table, if you don't mind, Sally. Did you, uh, find out about the flat? Well, I rang what was in here, but they're either already gone or they're too expensive. Mm. Told you it won't be easy. Oh, well, it's easier than this. Carry on. There you are. You can make a start on them. And you want to make a start on getting yourself washed if you want your meal out. Yep, just go in, Mrs. O. I'll, uh, see you tonight. Yeah, see you tonight. That's 17 I've got you so far. 17? New members. Aye, of a sort. They're not exactly big spenders, are they? Most of them suck like him over there, yeah. frightened of getting their throats wet. Them we have had in look like they couldn't wait to get out fast enough. Oh, now, be fair, Alec. You said 30 new members would be a job for me. Aye. Well, 17 isn't 30, is it? Let's wait till we get there first. Are you still going out with Tina, or what? Yeah, yeah, but not every night. Why not? Because we each recognise that we need time to ourselves. What, you mean to say you haven't got to pass the stage of showing each other your A-level results yet? 
You want to do what Kev did, get to move in with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see Mrs Bishop being really keen on that somehow. Yeah, well, Mrs Ogden wasn't uh, right keen on Sally being where she was, but he still managed it, didn't he? Yeah, but it's not just Mrs Bishop. No? No, I don't think Tina'd be right keen either. <laughs> hey, Alf, lad, well done. Oh, uh, well, I'm just looking in, you know. Ah, you do rate, you do rate. 80, you have to join in. Of course he is, I told you, everybody is. You're not going to be able to manage behind that bar on your own much longer. Have you got that form I give you, Alf? Uh, no, I seem to mislead it. No problem, I'll give you another one here. Oh. Ah. Bye, I knew there'd be some rough-looking characters in here, but I never thought I'd see out as rough-looking as you. <laughs> It's members only here, you know. So if you're not one, if I was you, I'd sling your hoop. I'm here by invitation as it happens. Crikey. I came here for a bit of peace and quiet, not to listen to you rattling on. You want to try the Rover Snug? It's very quiet in there just now. Oh, very funny. Hey, Alf, made out in block capitals, and I'd like to point out that uh, there should be an apostrophe in the phrase of year's membership. Uh, an oversight by the prince, I dare say. Oh, and who's this? Sully mate of mine. Good lad, purse. I knew I could rely on you. Nineteen. I can count. And for me free drink, I'll have a whiskey and soda, if you don't mind. A free what? Ah, uh, well, it's just a little inducement. You know, I'll, I'll get this one. I'm sure you will. All oh, right, well, I'll have a whiskey with you and all, then. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to cost you some at this, isn't it? <laughs> So tell me, how was your day? Evening's been great. <laughs> I mean before that. Well, I've wasted most of it. I've been trying to remember all those things I promised myself I'd do as soon as I got time. Well, now that you've got the time, you can't remember what they were. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's a good job I'm here then. I mean. Stop you getting bored at least. Do you know that's what I thought? What is it? Hello, Jenny. Sounds like you got visitors. Is your dad in? Um, no, he's not. Oh. Oh well, uh, never mind. I must have got it wrong. You can come in though if you want. No, no, I won't bother though, thank you. He just said he was going out for a while and went. Well, wasn't anything special. I'll say good night then, Jenny. Yeah. Good night. Good night. It, um, sounded like Rita Fair had loved to me. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Can't imagine what she wanted. No. Nope. So, don't let's waste time worrying about it, eh? Kevin, come and have a look for yourself. <sighs> what is it? She's trying to kill me. Keep your voice down. There, look. What is it? There for me to fall over. I could have gone headlong. Shh. Well, I could have. Come in here. Right, that is it, Kevin. Yeah, all right. I'd rather sleep on the streets than risk breaking Will you keep your voice down? That is a deliberate trap, that. She's put it there for me to fall over. No, she's Hello? not. Hello? What's going on? Oh, flipping it. Right, I'm going to have it out. Oh, don't be. I am. I'm not having all this carrying on. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, she has oh. it. She has it. Oh. Mrs. O, are you all right? Oh, it's my leg, Kevin. I've done so much to my leg. Oh. Well, it's 7.30 tonight. Richard O'Sullivan is that man about the house. But next on Plus, Billy is in big trouble with Lily Longstaff in loving memory.